bang needs knives i'm jared and we have a guest today red wolf edc i hope everybody's doing well we're just gonna bring them right in what is up brother what's up man don't pretend like i've been here the whole time trying to sneak my ass to the backstage motherfucker yeah backstage <laughs> um i hope everybody's doing well i seen somebody asked me a question about what's the best two son this is the thing with Tucson is that there's so many models that there's a lot of bad ones, but then there's a, a, a really big handful of good ones, like 10, maybe even 15 that are just like exceptional. And it's hard to pick the best one out of those 10. It's kind of like picking like the best Riat, you know, um, but out of 300 or so models, yes, there's a lot of bad ones. Usually I usually give a list like of 10 really good ones that you can't go wrong with. And I would say Mazwan Mokhtar is a really good designer. You can't really go wrong with his. Night Morning um, is a really good one. The, he does have some eh, models, but most of them are pretty good. Wong has some really good ones. Jelly Jerry, my favorite one by him is the 223, and that's personally one of my favorites, the TS-223. Right now, I got actually the 261. Um, this is a Tepe design, and it is amazing so you can't go wrong with this one for sure s 110v so super steel um obviously titanium all the the good stuff i just unboxed this uh in a video you guys will see that tomorrow i have the biggest unboxing i've ever done on this channel coming tomorrow the most knives ever i mean this is a big box of knives what do you got in your pocket right now uh, I am carrying the uh, coning areas today. Oh, carry this knife in a while. Figured why the hell not. He ain't fucking. And around. then as far as the fixed blade, usual shit for right lately. Oh, the, okay. Uh, Microtech yeah. Bastinelli is iconic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I had um, I had uh, Bob DeMarco on here uh, the last, and he's been into these uh, these sickle blade shapes. They're uh, kind of like that, but double edged. But man, they're they're sick. They're they're nasty looking. They See, look I'm not crazy. coordinated enough for a double edge blade, bro. Like I'll I'll fuck myself up. <laughs> I actually said the same thing with the um with the double edged OTF. Uh, I was I tested one out and I couldn't help but I would constantly have because you know like doing a repeat cut like and I'm talking about for EDC. Obviously, yeah. if it's for self defense, you're just pokey pokey. But when you're using it for EDC, that blade is constantly coming back at you. Like, you know, like you just said, like you're always worried about that other edge. And even like with the spine, like I'm used to going like this. Once you get a double edge, you ain't doing this no more. Yep, That's and exactly you, what I did, dude. I cut the <laughs> fuck out of my thumb. Yep, It's just a habit. It's just a habit. And, and yeah, that's what kept happening to me is I kept finding that like for, for EDC, I would constantly go, nope, <laughs> you know, I like, don't do that. And then with cutting, I was cutting some cardboard and I'm trying to like do repeat cuts, you know, and when it came back, I realized because normally I don't worry about the spine of a knife ever. Like it's, there's nothing wrong with the spine of a knife, yeah. but when you're dealing with an actual sharp edge, always coming back at you, it changes the tune of things. What's up? A little, old bit, man, heart? A little bit. Yeah. What two son are you holding? So this is the two six one. I just unboxed it. I was just saying that tomorrow um, I have a video going up of the biggest unboxing I've ever done on this channel. It's a huge unboxing. Now this is a Tepe design, and it is a badass knife. Oh man, it's awesome! Like this thing feels like a Riat for sure. This thing is really really good quality. The smoothness is on another level. It is S110V. I think this is the this might be the only model they have S110V in because Tepe Tepe's designs I think always have a super steel. All right, so I got some questions for you, Red Wolf. You ready? What's up, man? All right, let's get to them. So um, there's no rush on any of these questions. They can take as long as they take. It doesn't matter okay. if we don't get through them all um, because it's not, I don't have a ton, but. Uh, so let's just get into each one and we'll just have a conversation about it. Okay. Um, so your knives, like I know you use your knives and stuff like that. 
Um, how do you feel about like the wear on your knives? Do you like wear them with pride or does, does like scratches and like wear on your knife kind of drive you nuts and just make you end up refinishing them? Um, so one of my most hard used knives is actually the uh, Demco 8015 custom I have. Oh shit. Um, and that's, it has a DLC blade to it. And honestly, I, I love it. Like, especially with DLC, the people go, like, Oh, you scratched the DLC off. Like I'm telling you, if you get a scratch on DLC, like you're doing something horribly wrong because you can, I mean, it's, it's way harder than blade itself. Like normally yeah. it's between like a, like a 75 to an 80 Rockwell. Yeah. So if you're scratching that, you're just being really stupid. So during like general use, mostly what it does is it kind of gives us like almost like a rainbow looking color effect. Okay. Um, which is crazy looking. Um, and I, I don't know, man, like for me, like I hate sharpening knives, just to be honest here. Like that, that's your gift, not mine. I can do it, but like, oh my God, it pisses me off. I'll be right, sitting right. there, like, I'll be just sitting there sharpening like my hand, <laughs> <laughs> like the horrible ass cramp and everything else. <laughs> Will Red Wolf cane himself if we tip on Neves' channel? That's up to Jared, nope, man. My, 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 my leg. Knives, you get the bell. My leg is still fucked up. Like I still have a big fat ass bruise with a big ass yellow puddle around you it. Guys <laughs> ha- you guys have no idea. He sent me pictures the next day. His fucking leg not only was swollen, but looked like a damn, uh, I don't even know. It was just all purple and blue and green and yellow and not like a spot. His whole fucking leg, the entire fucking thing. He fucked himself up. So we're not going to do that today. We're going to just do some bell drops. Um, why is the wolf red? There is because red I'm a fucking ginger. All go. right. Cause I'm a goddamn dirty gingivitis ginger. <laughs> so, um, gingivitis, so the, D- the DLC thing. Um, yeah. DLC is like the hardest, um, coating you can get. I don't, yeah. There is no coating that you can get. That's, that's tougher. I do think though, like with the knives where people do get a DLC and they see it coming off. The reason why is because of the finish that was done before the coating was put on on yeah. certain knives. Like if the coatings put on right, like where they, they had the finish really nice and smooth, whether it was like, I don't know, like a, a multi-day tumble or something, you know, where they tumble it for a long time, then coat it. The coating is on there so flat and so nice that it is very difficult. You have to scratch that basically with something harder than like the, the coating itself, which if it's like it's 68 HRC, right? Rockwell, then it's going to take some sort of like, um, like say, um, like the stuff on shingles, like that type of stuff, like that would probably scratch it. Glass would scratch it. Pot, you know, some rocks, things like that. But yeah, it you have to be being pretty tough on your knife to really scratch that up. And scuffs don't count. People think for some reason that like snail trails on titanium, that's not a scratch. Like that, that is just like a scuff, which is not a scratch, meaning like it can... Like if you blasted it, it wouldn't show no more. Scratches, yeah. you actually have to get uh, taken out of the finish. You can't just like re re uh, blast it or whatever. Maybe you can with light ones, but like deep scratches, that's something that it takes a little bit more work. It does take some finishing work to get that off. Um, but so you um so like with uh, wear on your blades and stuff, um, do you, if you do get like you know, scratches and fucked up anodizing. Do you usually send them in to get refinished or do you just carry them as is? Um, so the only thing I send in is when I want something that has to get resharpened because again, I can do it. I have the tools. I have a big ass TS prop in my kitchen, but I just, I hate it. It's just tedious as hell. Um, I got shot in my shoulder a while back. That, yeah. So doing doing those basic constant movements is agony. I also got caught carpal tunnel from hitting people so many times. I, so I same same thing with that. It's so okay. I just don't I just don't want to deal with it. Like again, yeah. I, I've done it before. I can. I respect yeah. you for doing that. Me personally, I just check out. I'm like I'm yeah. I'm good. No, that's no, actually my biggest issue is the carpal tunnel with with sharpening. It, it's a motherfucker. Um, yeah. I have to do it. Like I separate um, times and I. I I really pace myself because if I just keep getting going and I just do one after another, I won't be able to, to hold anything for a week. So I'm usually pretty careful with it. Um, to a Dave, story times at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. 
brother. I've been, I've been, I've been shot, stabbed, ahead, fucking man, blown up. Uh, yeah. was in prison for a while. Got in a couple knife fights doing that. Yeah. I, I got a big ass scar on my stomach going up towards my actual nipple. Got another big ass one on my back. So yeah, I'm a bit of a warrior, I guess. How now, now I'm a civilian though, to be clear. So don't shoot All me right, again. Do you want to just tell them really quick, really quick, sum it up. If you're going to tell a long story, just save it till nine o'clock. How'd you get shot? Which time? Okay, we're gonna save it for nine o'clock. <laughs> All right. Um. Oh, I just want to tell everybody: anytime any videos go up, if you click on a link and it doesn't work for whatever reason, let me know in the comments of the video so that I can replace it. Let let me know which one because sometimes people will tell me your link's not working, but they don't tell me which one, and I want to replace it. But I usually have many links, and I know it's not all my links. Um. So what is your style of knife? Like, because usually people have like, I know you probably like multiple different styles. I'm not saying you don't like multiple different styles, but there's usually a certain style that just speaks to each person. What is the style of knife that speaks to you or designer? So with me, I'm random, bro. Like I have so many different things, big knives. I tend to stay away from smaller knives. So I have these big ass two XL hands, Yeah, but like, Otherwise, man, like I like pretty much everything. Like people like hop on my Instagram or whatever. One constant thing is like, oh, you know, your knives are so random. Like, yeah, pretty much. Like I just like trying new stuff. Yeah. Like I, I bought, uh, I think it's 13 knives this week already and it's only Wednesday. And ch chances are none of those will, will be kept. And if they are, they'll be kept for a little bit now. So I'm just constantly moving stuff in. My biggest thing is I like to try new stuff. So that's kind of my whole thing. Um, I don't always make, I don't always make videos on new knives. Sometimes I do, as you guys saw, like with the, like the, the drunk buying videos where I have like 40 knives in a row on my channel, yeah, those um, funny. those things happen occasionally, but for the most part, like I just get it in hand. I know I'm not going to like it almost immediately and then move it on. Do you have a favorite blade shape? Uh, right now I'm kind of obsessed with, with Tonto's, but prior to that, it was drop points. Prior to that, it was Warren cliffs. Prior to that, it was a heart, my modified harpoon, like. Again, I'm a random ass person, dude. Right, right. I get it. I get it. Do you have a preferred size? Normally like bigger. Over eight, um, inch, over eight inches. Uh, the blade needs to be at least four inches. Otherwise, the, the handle isn't isn't going to uh, fit in, in my hand. So. Right, right, right. I get it. Um, unless it has a finger troll. Like certain knives of finger trolls or whatever, they, they fit just fine. But then you also lose a lot of the actual blade length for it. So for sure. A lot of the uh, not blade length, the uh, sharpened edge. Do you have any favorite knife designers, like knife designers that uh, like their styles, like just really like you, you tend to like them? Um, probably Old Dominion Knife Works is something that like all of their stuff I really like. Old Dominion Knife Works? Nice, yep. nice. It, um, is a, it is a smaller um, custom maker. He goes by a Casey uh, Middleton, but his company is Old Dominion Knife Works. Uh, he actually just got into Knife Center and a couple of other different retailers, but like he's been grinding for years. Makes really cool stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna um, I'll see if I can't uh, pull some of his stuff up really quick so we can uh, check it out. Do you you've had um, some of his knives though, or you just like yeah? Do, um, I've right? owned. Uh, so I've probably handled about thirty. I've owned seven. No shit. I think seven. They look pretty pricey. They're not. Um, so Casey's whole thing is that he does this shit for fun. So oh, you, you can get a crazy ass dressed out knife. Sure. Right. That's not what he specializes in. I'm not really sure why he's highlighting all these stuff. For the most part, he does like working finishes. He basically wants you to really be able to use, use those knives. Yeah. Um, what he can do Damascus, he, d he recently just started used, used doing a uh, Zerku tie, but even the Zerku tie is like under a thousand dollars. Like it isn't anything right. crazy for, right. for, for what a custom is anyways. Yeah. Cause it's customs, man. They can go sky's the limit. So yeah. no, I seen that one on there. It was six fifty. That's not bad for a custom. I don't think people, sometimes people like they see six fifty and they think that's expensive for a custom. That's not bad. Yeah. That's it's not bad. If, he's USA, right? Yeah. Yeah, not for you. He's in, he's in um, Virginia, I believe it is. Uh, Hinder just posted. It was Talica who showed me. And it's a custom. I think it was an XM18. 
It was and it was a custom XM18 with the tri So that means he did this custom, and it was like it was over two grand. It was like twenty four hundred dollars or more, or something like that. Maybe even twenty eight hundred. But so just to give an idea of how much you know a USA fully custom knife can cost. Yeah. Thank you, Cue Ball. Yes, smash that like button. I appreciate that. Okay, Mason, let's go, Brandon. Hey, so somebody was talking about a Walter Wells custom. Um, what do you mean by you have to save up for those? Those are actually pretty cheap knives. Um, he's another maker that he basically, like, if you give him a cool knife design or cool idea, like, he'll hook you up on it really, really fat. Yeah, they're and, only and, 200 bucks, ain't they? Two, yeah, I mean, I mean he, he has he has higher stuff than that, to be clear. Oh, but, like, oh, nothing super crazy um, unless you want something absolutely insane. And for most part, it's, like, cost of materials plus, like, a couple dollars an hour. Like, it, it really isn't shit. He's very reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. I seen that he take, I seen some, I've seen a few of his designs, but I seen where he takes like open L's and it takes the blade out and then customizes yeah. it from there. That's pretty, that's a fucking brilliant idea. It's badass. But yeah, I seen some of his customs and he seems to do one thing I noticed. He makes blades very slicey, which I like, you know, because I yes. see some of them like open L thin. Like that's, that's amazing. And he uses a lot of micarta. I love micarta. It's like my favorite hand material um, next to titanium, probably. Bought a Knife Center exclusive Centaurion in denim micarta with bronze. Nice. Yeah, those are really slick. I've, I'm trying to get a hold of because I watched one of um, Emler's videos, and it was he was at um, Tactile Turns booth. Now, I know those knives are probably a little small for your hands. but Very small. They are really, really well done, though. I, I figured I haven't tried any, but they're USA made. That was my attention. That just got my attention right away. And then Texas, is that where they're at? Texas. Yep. Okay. And um, so I contacted them on Instagram because they have a new model coming, the same knife with thumb studs in Magna Cut. So I contacted them on Instagram. I'm waiting to hear back. I just did it before this, and I'm hoping to, to try to get one of those ones with the thumb studs and the Magna Cut. First of all, it'll be my first Magna Cut and my first knife from them. And I feel that their knives seem like they're very reasonably priced for what you're getting. So yep. we will see. Hey, so there's a bunch of people asking questions about how I got shot, um, what the knife fight is, everything else. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing these questions. This is not my stream. I don't want to just hop on a random tangent and basically cut off Jared. So yep. I see you. Um, you can hit, me up, on, you can hit me up on a, you can hit me up on Red Wolf EDC um, on Instagram or Facebook at Kyle J. Lanfear. Um, and I'll answer these questions. I'm not, again, I'm not ignoring you guys at all. Um, I just don't want to go on some long ass rant because I'm great right. at doing that shit. Right. And me and him already talked before this live. He knows at nine o'clock. Everybody knows that too. At nine o'clock, we do story time. So anybody, because otherwise, people, a lot of people come here for knives, and I don't want to push people out that are that are trying to come here for knives. At nine o'clock, everybody knows it's fucking story time, and you know that's where needs knives goes a little crazy. So just. Uh, Hold your horses. Nine o'clock. We will. Uh, we will do story time. One hundred percent. I promise you guys. Um, thoughts on LTK's two son the vandal. It's that's the one you would like, man. It's fucking. I've like, actually tried it. Did you? How'd you try yep. it? A buddy of mine bought bought an auction on eBay for like four hundred fucking dollars. Oh shit! And he sent and he sent it to me first. How'd you like it? Why didn't you do a video? Just didn't feel like it. Man. If, you haven't, if you haven't noticed, dude, like I my know. videos are, are really sporadic. Like I don't do this shit to get famous. I don't care if anything happens. I just, I don't know. I just have a fun. Wow. Ring that bell, goddamn it! Do it again. Damn it! I'm lost again. You found yourself in a good place, though. Every day, EDC. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. And hey, one more bell. I've seen the donation before we went live. Thank you very much. Um. So, what'd you think of it, though? Um, I liked it. It's kind of thin, like it's a bigger knife, but it's like, has a, it's pretty thin in the actual handle. So ergonomics personally weren't for me, okay. but I also have big ass hands. So for most people, it's probably a better and better that way. Um, personally, I just like big fat knives. So yeah, I think LTK said he was trying to make it thicker. He didn't yeah. want it to be that thin, at least from his mouth. He said he was trying to get it like over 0.65 or something like that, but they, for whatever reason, I don't. Maybe their their tooling couldn't do it. I have no idea. But they make some thick boys, so I don't know. Yep. I feel like they could have done it. Maybe it was just that much more material. I have no idea why they didn't for whatever reason. But 
Um, but yeah, he wanted it bigger. What's up, Bees Blaze? Shout out to Bees Blaze. Go and check his channel out. Um, Breeze is bringing a 1911 to the to the night fight at nine o'clock. Nice, nice. Stay strapped. Q ball. Um, was Red Wolf? You'd like the TS243. It's a thick end. Thank you, Fiend. There's Bees Blades's uh, link right there. You guys can get to his channel just by hitting the link. Go and give him a follow. Um, so that, uh, that knife, I think it's nine and a quarter or nine and a half in total length. It's a big knife. It's a four inch blade. Uh, it, it looks pretty big and LTK, he loves his big knives. And for anybody who doesn't know the knife we're talking about is the knife designed by LTK with Tucson and Max Kerchuk or Ch whatever it is. And yeah, that one right there. That's but that that that's a different knife. That's the knife we were just talking about the yeah. 243 or TS whatever. TS 243. But yeah, the one from LTK is a gigantic button lock. Um I forget the number on it. Um but you guys can look it up Tucson with LTK and it's a big dog for sure. It is the it is the uh, Tucson 329. Oh, the Tucson TS 329 is the giant button lock. Well, Thank you, man. I appreciate that, Walt. Thank you so much. Thank you for the donation. What the hell is going on here? It is a like very that. cool looking knife. I will say that much. It's a yeah, very, very yeah. Uh, which clean number, design. Which number was it? I'll just pull it up really quick for everybody. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, TS329. TS. Which is crazy. They've made 329 different knife designs and shit, they've only been around. The, I just bought the 380. <laughs> shit. <laughs> So that's, I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're going crazy, but, uh, but yeah, they, I mean, they have so many designers and if they can handle it, it's the one on the right, the big dog left, yep. hand right. but yeah, it's a, it's a big one. Um, let's see if I can't get it any bigger. I don't think I can. Now it's probably just going to mess up. I, don't know I believe in you. In that. Zoom that shit. Yeah. It took me to another fucking thing. Son of a bitch. <laughs> when you try to click anything in here, it's just, it doesn't, uh, oh, wait, you know what? I'd have to share this page with you guys, which is stupid. So, but you guys see it. You guys can go and look at it. I'm going to take it off because I'm not uh, going to get lost on that thing. And I'll be sitting here for five minutes trying to fix it. Um, <laughs> Chris Reeves lockbacks are coming soon. Really? Huh. I'll Didn't pass. About that. Uh, yeah, I'll pass on that too. I'm, I'm not. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a Sabenza, which is all right. I'm um, one of the Bogwood inlays. And then I have the fixed blade, the um, Nala, I think it is, like the big ass Warren Cliff looking one. How do you like it? I like it. I carry it all yeah. the time. Nice, nice. Yeah. It's, I got uh, the, the edge is, the steel is a little soft. So it's, it gets dull pretty fast, um, which is give and a take, I guess. But the ergonomics are fantastic. Yeah. I got the 21. I like the 21. I personally wasn't a huge fan. I mean, I like the um on it's a, it's a dope knife. I like it a lot. But I personally like the 21 a little bit more. Uh, most people like the um on a little bit more. But I think a lot of people like the um on a little bit more because it's a little bit more harder to get. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Um, you know, everybody's got their preferences. But backlocks, I'm not a huge fan of. There are some I like. Don't get me wrong. There are some backlocks I think are awesome. But out of... Uh, like a hundred, there's going to be two that I like. So for the most part, I'm not a big fan. Hey, Shane. So I actually have a TR4 uh, Shaw Skull Auto and a TR4 Manual right now. I'm actually for, uh, actually for sale. So, And then I just bought a uh, TR3 in the fish scale uh, DLC S45VN today. No problem. no problem. I'll just get a little closer to the mic. I had him turn his mic down a little bit. So his is very loud compared to mine. Um, that's probably all it is. He can tweak his mic. I can't tweak mine. So I can turn my volume way down, brother, or I can so, make it really loud to fuck everybody up right now. <laughs> well, I think if my voice is uh, closer to the mic, I think it'll be a little bit better for these guys. Okay. So okay. we'll we'll listen to them. If they say they want um, one adjusted, then we'll have you turn yours down. Then they can just turn their volume up and we'll be, inter you know, interesting. Okay. I, sh I should have before this. Next time I'll remember this. I should have listened to us. Um, 
on another thing or something. I don't even know if I can do that. So I want to talk about just really quick. I know you said you don't sharpen knives, but edge finishes because, you know, I do do a lot of sharpening. And I get into a lot of different types of edges. And, you know, I know you said you're not really into sharpening, but there are so many different kinds of edge finishes and different edges. Like you can talk about polished and then you can talk about a polish with a um, with a grip pattern thrown over the top of it or even a light uh, grip pattern thrown over the top of it. You know, a fine um, edge where it's not quite polished. Um, you can talk about a convex polish, a convex toothy, a regular toothy, uh, a flat V grind. Um, there's even like... Um, what's it called, where you do one angle bigger than the other side, there's a dual grit, there's so many different kinds of finishes. Do you have like an edge preference type? Um, I know like for me, I like all different kinds of shit for edges, it just depends on the task and the knife and you know, but do you have a, a type of finish that you do when you do sharpen your knives? Um, so whatever the hell Bark River does all their knives in, I think it's a flat grind, um, but like, dude that shit is so ridiculously sharp even when it starts to get dull like it'll still process through meat and everything else which mm -hmm. sounds bad but whatever you get the idea yeah yeah i get it i get it <laughs> not yeah. that type of meat like food yeah, print. I, I think uh like uh a 600 grit and i've said this a bunch of times to people especially with a certain angle like say 17 degrees per side but like 600 grit is a toothy finish while still being somewhat fine um, it, it is a medium grit edge, but I think for versatile, like if we're going to talk about what is like a, cause there is no one size fits all there isn't. But if you were going to say a one size fits all 600 grit, in my opinion is the one size fits all because any steel takes a good 600 grit for the most part. Not now there are a couple steels that don't do the best with that they do better with a lower grit but that type of grit does good on 99.9 percent .9 of knives really good now some steels will take a polish better than others but they will still do great with that medium grit edge so um i think that for most people that is a great finish to go with if you're looking for one that's going to be um the best all around now, obviously, there's materials. Like, if you're shaving or something, you know, like a straight razor, a higher grit's going to be better, right? You don't want to fucking shave your face with a toothy edge, but for EDC. What's up, RM Kunk? <laughs> <laughs> I sharpened my EDC fixed blades, AEBL, on standard double-sided stone from hardware store. So, um, look out. So, like, AEBL is a steel that, in my opinion, takes... Okay, so... It does really good, um, really thin and fine. It was originally made for razor blades. However, in knife steels, being thicker than a razor blade, I have found that it does not do well with a high grit or a polish or anything like that. It does great with a low toothy grit. It tends to just lose all of its bite when you go up, up in grit. So in my opinion, you want to keep that one real low in grit to get the best type of performance out of the steel with still having bite on the edge. Um, I've seen John Evans. Oh, he's talking to somebody. All right. Uh, Bree says, I'm going to go and buy a 600 grit stone for the bench grinder. There you go. You ruin a fucking knife. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So what's your favorite deployment option? What's your favorite kind of action? Uh, for the most part, lately I'm into fixed blades. So, oh, um, <laughs> fuck it. <action>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, I'm a big proponent of the whole like slow roll, like you roll it out with your thumb. Um, <laughs> like this custom right here, just yeah. roll it out. Just basic oh, shit. Right, right, right. So, I don't know. I'm weird, man. I feel like my, most people like flippers or they like to like middle finger flick or like some crazy ass mechanism. For me, slow roll with the frame lock, perfect. Like, <laughs> well, I like a slow roll too. And I think some people, like I've heard other people on other channels call that like the, uh, I don't want to speak for them, but like the old man uh, type of action. Fuck it. <laughs> but to me, though, I think, but you know what I always notice about those guys? 
eventually, eventually, when they've been in the community long enough and they've had enough knives, they eventually find that satisfying too. Because when you find enough knives, you find the ones that do slow roll very good. And then that lock up, when you hear that lock crack, you know what I mean? Where it's like crack and it opens up or when it locks up, when you open it up. I think that uh, that's very satisfying. That loud pop when it locks up. And yep. so I can find that very, very satisfying. That's why I like Savenza's, Rocksteads. They just have that that slow rolling uh, action that, like I said, it just feels like it locks up like a vault. When you Medford, man. Medford. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, Medford is um, one that definitely, man, that, that thing. Now, I've heard some people. I haven't experienced this though, so I'm, you know, I'm not saying me, but I, some people, I had a few people uh, get in my comments saying that uh, a lot of his were having uh, like lock failures and shit when they were spine whacked or something. I don't know about that though. Yeah. You know so I mean? first off, don't spine whack your knives. That's stupid. But it if proves you did, almost, have it you proves had almost any- nothing. But uh, sure I've seen you spine. I mean, personally, yeah, I, I have. But to be fair, <laughs> I, I have an, an old Marauder custom. And I have an old fat daddy custom and I sold the rest of them. So like those are the ones I have around. Those are also really old knives and they perform perfectly. Yeah. Um, that being said, I've heard stories about the stop pin coming out. So then the knife, like they literally use the knife and the whole thing wicks back and like stabs their arm or something crazy. Oh, shit. Um, I have heard of locks failing. He, and my, I, actually my, my buddy Dirk almost lost his finger to that. Like literally the lock, he was cutting something and the lock failed and like cut his finger like super, super deep. Damn. So I mean, it, it happens, but like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like to me personally, like I like some of Medford's knives to be clear, but for the most of them, not really my thing. And the uh, price string structure for what you get is fucking ridiculous. Like, uh, Bree says, "Isn't the spine the hammer end?" No, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, in a lot of ways, I do think, like in twenty twenty one. Like knives are so refined and companies are coming out with such amazing shit for like the same price. And some of his knives, not all, I, cause I love a, a few of his models. I love a lot, but there are some of his models that I think they're just, they're almost like the nineties style, you know, where they, they haven't been upgraded like that type of feeling where it's like, Man, like you feel like he hasn't moved anywhere, and he's you. But I do know he's doing different stuff, though. Don't get me wrong. He came yep. out with that that flipper. It's supposed to be on bearing. Supposed to be really good. He's doing a, um, I think a slip joint, and he's probably doing some other stuff. But and then he's also OEM'd a bunch of stuff. But um, but like, never mind Medford himself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah i love the slim midi like that's one of, i mean i love the slim midi but that's just you know me some people do some people don't um but yeah uh drew just says medford might be my least favorite brand i would say some of his models are aren't for me just because they're not to me they're not edc knives they're more fun knives you know yeah. where yeah do they cut yeah but if you had the choice you're gonna grab that or you're gonna grab say uh anything else right so i will say my uh old medford custom that uh, fat daddy or whatever that thing has i don't know what he did to sharpen that knife i, I really don't because there's no reason why a knife that has a fucking it's like that goddamn thick of a blade should be able to outcut like a spider co pm2 uh-huh. but like i swear to god it's like it's like right on par if not a little bit better like you don't feel yeah. it cut. You just hold the blade to it and then just slides down with no pressure. I'm like, yeah. this, this is fucking nuts. Um, yeah. But vice versa, I had a Proxima from him that I didn't like at all. Um, I had a pretty shitty edge. Uh, I had a Nosferatu manual. That was one of the worst knives I've ever handled by far. That thing is a fucking garbage fire. Um, I have had the auto as well. The auto was actually really good, but the manual sucked ass. Um, I've had a bunch of his knives and I, it's, I've kind of gotten to the point where I've sort of written off the entire brand. Um, also Greg Medford himself is a hypocrite. So that's a big, that's a big thing for me as well. Yeah. A lot of people, um, say that, um, but like my slim midi though, I, I was happy to see him do something EDC reasonable, like where it's decent behind the edge, decent spine thickness. It can cut really good. Um, sharpens really good. And I personally like it a lot, but like, 
the Praetorium, I didn't like it all because it's just yeah, like no. squeezing it. It's like I'm fucking squeezing a like a bag of nails. Literally, that's what it felt like. The jimping is like this spread far apart. So it's like squeezing it. It's ridiculous. Like it doesn't feel it, literally. It's like holding a porcupine. Like why the fuck would I want to squeeze <laughs> onto this? Yeah, that but, yeah that, and then the giant ass clip with the big the big Medford M on it. Right. It's just super uncomfortable. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but <clears throat> with deployments for me, though, I like all deployments. I, I, I know that's like cliche to say, but the one that I least probably like is probably front flippers. And I know, like, that's the thing right now. I know I'm it is. Stu- I'm so bad at those. Uh, I'm good at them, but it's just, it's not something that. It's not only certain knives, like say this one right here. This is the Civivi McKenna. This thing is fun to, to front flip. It's so easy. It doesn't take, you know, any effort. But then there's knives that literally take effort. And I don't want the fucking effort. I'd rather just spidey flick it open. And I find myself now going back to wanting more flippers. Um, you know, everybody says that though. You kind of go in a circle, right? You start one place and then you move your way around to everything. And then you always wind right back up where you started, <laughs> you know, like whether it's, uh, with nope. action materials, nope. blade shape. Nope. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Took four tries. <laughs> what is that one? Uh, the, uh, real steel rocket and oh, okay. M three ninety and like, kind of like, like red micarta. Does that have multi row bearings or needle bearings? It has I one of the have items. no idea. I'm pretty sure it That's has pretty good action though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's either needle bearings or it is um uh multi row bearings. Real steel likes to do those multi row bearings knives and the the needle bearings. I don't know. Um, I just know it has really good action. Um, the thumb studs are like not properly jimmed, so it feels weird to flick out. Sometimes it's perfect. Sometimes it just feels janky. Yeah. So is what it is. But as far as the closing, it's it's pretty good. Um, then my slim midi was 20 thousands. Doesn't make sense that the blade was thinner stuck was thinner be- behind the edge. So the thing with oh. those, and I, because I've talked to a lot of people with, um, a lot of different methods, he has a variation. So like when they do the hollow grinds, you can get one at 15 thousands and you can get one at 25 thousands. Like somebody called up because one person had one at 15,000 and they were like, man, you got to get one of these. You got to get one of these. So his buddy got one. And when he got it, it was like 27,000 behind the edge. So he was pissed. Calls up Medford and they say, yeah, that's in our variation. Like that's, you know, like that's acceptable between our variation of how thin we will make them. So that's just the one you got. You know, you could have got one at 20,000. You might've got one at 15,000, but it's within our standards. There's a lot of knife companies, like Italian knife companies are the worst with variations. Their standards, to me, I, I personally, I hate it. And that's why, like, I've had three of the same model where literally the action is 100% different between each three. One has a, such a strong detent, you can barely open it. Another one falls open. And, you know, it's and then another one's perfect. And it's like, what the fuck? But they all came fresh from the factory. And it's just their variables. They don't, you know, like their standards. They don't have a set standard or a set, set um, like pressure rating or whatever you call that. I don't know. Crazy. What do you think about uh, Italian knives? I've not handled too many. I handled the uh, Fox Radius. Um, I sold that knife ASAP. I was like, this thing is stupid. Um, the... Uh, I really like the, um, I believe it's, I think it's real steel again. Just to real steel, the uh, gecko. That's another t- Italian knife that I fucking love that thing. But it's also a laser beam too, so. Yeah. they Some of them, man, some of them do their grinds really good. Sometimes they're thick. Just depends on the knife. I've had a few giant mouses. Um, I've had some bad ones and some good ones. But, uh, and I don't want to speak for all Italian knife companies or knives like that. There are some amazing Italian knives. So I just want to put that out there. I wasn't trying to speak for all knife companies. I was mostly talking about giant mouse. <laughs> um, all right. So let's go into some weird questions now. All right. Shoot. The world's falling apart. Okay. World's falling apart and time goes back pretty much. Right. We go back okay. to a barter system. Right. Because if if everything gets fucked up, right? 
and say there's a, a real civil war where violence and shit causes or we, we stop um, production with other countries, whatever, we go back to a barter system. So now we have to grow things, hunt things, do all that good shit. You know, obviously, uh, safety is a big issue. What would your EDC look like in times like that? Probably the same as it is literally right now because things right now are crazy. Started, crazy. Carrying, started, started carrying self-defense knife again. <laughs> like, I'm always carrying a gun. Like, <laughs> Okay, take the firearm out of it, but everything else. I mean, I've been training with this thing, not this one, obviously, this is a live blade, but with the actual trainer for eh, a couple of weeks now, and uh, it, it's fucking ridiculous. I love this knife What's as I stab myself in the choice? thumb. Say again? What's your regular fixed blade of choice? Something like for, you know. Um, like probably, the, probably the uh, Bark River uh, Anscutter. Okay. It's a, it, it's a, a Dan Tope design. It's a bigger knife, but it's fucking fantastic in hand. You'd pick that over that Chris Reeve one? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. Okay. What about um, like for just a regular pocket EDC knife, something like that? I mean, I, I don't know, dude. I'm always carrying different stuff. I've carried four different knives today alone. Like, I get bored super quickly. <laughs> okay. Well, we just threw you in this world, and you're walking out of the house. What are you grabbing? First thing that comes to mind. There you go. You got a ProTech. What ProTech is that? Uh, ProTech TR3 fish scale um, with the uh, full DLC. Remember, guys, he grabbed it because I was the closest to him. S45V. Um, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, what do you think? Let me ask you this. So, like, uh, where you're at, you're in California. Um, yep. would you, Liberalville. Would you try to relocate? Because we're talking about like fucking like the world's like completely different than now. Like, you know, um, it, it's mass chaos, very dangerous for movements, things like that. Or it's at least leading to that point. People are living off grid. Um, a lot of people are not in homes no more. A lot of people are living off the land. Where, where would you try to, to relocate? Let me just ask you that. So is this like... The apocalypse scenario where there's like no guns anymore or are we still are there still firearms around and everything else because there's still there's still guns but it's just getting them and getting bullets or is like near impossible like okay so bullets, like you so, get bullets, so you're not gonna want to shoot them so we're hunting. basically talking like like metro uh 2033 type of type of scenario yeah basically there's there's, okay. there's bullets but you just you don't want to shoot them unless if you have to and especially like you want to use them for hunting and stuff you know okay or well, you know some other type of hunting you know what i mean <laughs> um in a scenario like that you kind of want to be where you where you kind of know the area um i know the area where i'm at right now i'm also six foot eight 310 pounds pretty capable been training in different martial arts and different weapons my entire life i have quite a bit of experience with combat um so uh yeah, you'd be some I'd probably eating. just fucking stay right the fuck here like you'd be some good eating because of, you, you can feed a whole fucking tribe <laughs> pretty much i mean because you could always argue oh i'm gonna go to the forest or oh, i'm gonna go to this or i'm gonna go to that but if you don't actually have those skills that's like the worst thing you could do and i'm gonna be honest with you like i have like lukewarm skills when it comes to that shit yeah. so like i'm just fodder i'm gonna get eaten by a fucking bear or some shit <laughs> yeah. i'm pretty good with that stuff um i grew up like in the woods and things like that and i used to go down like to mississippi and my grandpa's like i've done lots of hunting and but i do know what you mean though like it, it doesn't matter because like even in those scenarios right i still had you know um things accessible so i do understand what you're saying but i personally think i would want to get out of the area i'm at least in i don't necessarily have to go out into the appalachian mountains but i think getting out of populated areas would be very very smart but um i'm gonna grab what um like those people that say i'm gonna grab an sks and go into woods now those people usually die first 
but but I do know what you're saying. I, and I think maybe a lot of those people, I mean, a lot of people do know how to live off the land or to live off the grid and will do just fine out in the woods just because they have building skills, they have hunting skills, they have survival skills, you know, wound care skills. And I think if you understand that type of stuff and understand, like, you know, how to keep dry, you know, how to keep infections away, what to eat, what not to eat, I think those are all important things. If you're going to survive. But yeah, if you've never been off the grid and never done it ever, not even for a little bit, you're fucked out there. Pretty much. Uh, also, I live in Stockton, California. It's pretty ghetto out here anyways. And um, my house is already pretty fucking reinforced. So, yeah. Yeah. I wonder uh, in that type of situation, though, like if like places like that would just be so ran down and rampant that it wouldn't matter. Like. You Maybe I mean? that's entirely Maybe. possible. It is. It is like, so, like, uh, like case in point, I live upstairs, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a very narrow stairway to get upstairs. There's a shotgun right by the stairs. Mm -hmm. So like if someone runs up in here I'm going to fire a freaking buckshot point blank range in this narrow ass space, and it's going to shred whatever else is there. Yeah. A lot On top of times of that, I got weapons stashed fucking everywhere. Like yeah. I've had people break into this house before. Um, and I'm still here, so. Well, I would think. Try figure out what, what, how, how, be, what that means. I think the people wanting like what you have wouldn't hesitate to burn the bitch down to get to whatever you have. Like, because I know burning it down would actually hurt them more than anything because they wouldn't be able to get it. But a lot of people, you know, they don't they don't think smart when it's like chaotic shit like yeah. that, and just to get you out of there just so that they could get some sort of access to it. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say, but that's Probably. the thing that I would worry about, you know? Um, but yeah, I think uh, finding a good little tribe of people, people you're friends with, people you know, and finding um, some sort of place that's not like, like in the woods, but like off the grid a little bit, a nice little shack out somewhere, you know, that does have some land around it a little bit would be a better option than a populated area with thousands, hundreds of thousands of people all hungry. Hey, you know man, what I mean? Worst comes to worst. You ever see the movie? Uh, this is, is uh, the end. Oh man. I don't know. I might. It's, have, a, it's a Seth Rogen movie. No, I don't think I have. Okay. Look it up. Uh, worst comes to worst. I'll be Shane Tatum. Fuck it. <laughs> What happened? Just tell me what happened. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. I don't, it's literally oh, I kind of like like the big no, ending for it. Picture. I need the mental picture. My brain's going all over the place right now. Is he a cannibal? Uh, he's basically someone's bitch. Oh, they they, they, they literally they literally put him on a leash and he has a get mask on. He's like, look at the guy's shoe. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's funny. Um. See, it's more funny if you just saw the movie. You're like, oh, I get it. I got to explain to you, fucker. Yeah. If get I, cultured, goddamn! It's a funny I movie. I wish I would have seen it now. Um, Jesus, you should drop the if you know what that means. What? Jesus, you should drop the if you know what, you know what that means. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't get it either. Um, I'm definitely heading south. During the end times, I'd rather be with country folks anyways well country folks know how to survive a little bit better and i think around in populated areas i think one of the biggest problems would be is the point that homeless people know how to survive right homeless people do know how to survive they they survive every day the the thing is though is they survive because the things around them are active that's why that's yeah. the only reason why they survive you take that away they are not going to survive they're they're going what they'll do is they'll try to move south because they can survive still without the city. I'm not saying that they need the city. I'm just saying like that that's what keeps them thriving is the fact that places are throwing out food. You have access to people that will give you change and give you money. You can go into McDonald's bathrooms and wash your hands and get water and things like that. You literally, they like you walk into McDonald's, they have the, the drinks right there. They can just walk up, pour a glass and then walk off. They can get free water from McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, all these places they get free water from. So like all these places, keep them alive take all that away now you have a lot of people most of which not talking about the homeless all the people that were running the shit don't know how to survive and they start panicking and now that they're panicking when when you have like i've been through some pretty 
crazy situations where I've had to survive and the things you will do to survive don't everybody who says like, Oh, I would never do that. You've obviously never been in a survival situation because I promise you, you will do anything to survive. Pretty anything. much Think about drowning and what you would do for air, whatever you would do for air, you'll do to survive. So it, it just, so like the people that are trying to survive, are all going to be trying to do the same things and trying to go to the same places, find the same food, all of that. And it will like a place with hundreds of thousands of people will just be a death trap. I'm staying in Florida. <laughs> it's warm. It's plenty of spring water. Bang. And there's some gators to eat. So that'd be, eating. I'd be eating me some gators. What's up? Knife Sergeant. Shout out to knife Sergeant. Definitely go check his channel out. Snuzz says most folks in the West, wait, most folks in the West die. Just the fact that no water kiddos, Texas has water and hogs. That is one thing that will be eaten up. Like they overpopulated America pretty quick. They would get decimated very quickly. Come, yep. pan, come a real pandemic. Yes. Especially <laughs> right now, dude, everything's already like super scarce. Yeah. Oh yeah. People, I guarantee there's already people eating hog. I promise you there is. There's people out there looking at bacon prices and saying, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I have fucking hogs in my bed. Come here, Betsy. Oh. <laughs> Come here, Betsy, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wilbur. There's not, There's um, There's um. the the link to Knife Sergeant's channel. Definitely go give him a follow. Texas will get decimated by the cartels i think a lot of the cartels would just stay down south i don't think they would i mean i don't know what they would literally do but it's possible it's very possible they're, they're, they're I, down there running shit so they, they are they're already running shit but in texas i mean there's a lot of people with a lot of artillery i don't know it's hard to say i know there are the cartel has like all the artillery yeah. too but i'm just saying like there's a lot of people down there that are equally is prepared for shit like this. But, you know, it, it's, man, it's hard to say. Um, I think a lot of people would try to choose to go south. Some people would stay north and it'd be, it'd be messed up. You'd have a lot of people just um, not knowing what to do and doing the, they'd be being their worst, right? I've been preparing for this shit for 10 years. <laughs> He's like, I want it to happen tomorrow. That sounds ready. exhausting though. Like just, just think about that. Like this thing might happen. I'm going to be ready if it ever does. Then just watch it just never actually happen. Like you just spent thousands of dollars. You paranoid about this shit your entire life and just I, never happens. I wouldn't say that. I would say that people that like, it's kind of like say somebody who hunts, right? Somebody who hunts that it's not that they're preparing just for the bad. They're also preparing food for their family for the winters they're also doing something fun and active they, they have a good hobby so i look at it as a hobby too like people that do prepare for stuff like that they're one just being prepared and ready two they're having fun doing it they get to collect a lot of cool shit they get the you know what i mean so um i do think there are some people that do take it too far and like in that case like you're hurting your family i agree but uh the people that just take it just far enough to be extra prepared I, I wouldn't say that they're they're crazy. It's wait, it's not might. It's happening, bro. I don't want it to happen, but it's inevitable. Facts. It's yeah. So right yeah. So right now, I agree with you. But let's just let's keep in mind, right? If you know like mean? maybe like a hundred years ago, if yeah. you're like, ah, oh, the world's gonna end, like, no, it's not. Why two Ks gonna kill us? No, it's not. Right. If all this, if yes, all this shit's gonna happen, is it gonna kill us? No, it's not. Like. In this one, in particular instance, you drew a lottery ticket and you happen to possibly win the apocalypse. But like for anything else, you just waste your fucking time. Like, um, at least in my opinion, to be very clear, this is all my opinion. Yeah. I'm not one of those guys like, oh, my opinion is the gospel truth. Fuck that. Deal with it. I can give a shit. Like if you have right. your own opinion, awesome. This is just yeah. my opinion. Right, right. Blades to be fair, fade. I'll probably die first. I got a fucking flare in my head, so. <laughs> blades and fades there is the link to his channel go and check out his channel it's uh but yeah i man, yeah it's we are on a very very fast decline very fast decline as of right now so do you have any good kitchen knives uh i pretty much use my actual knives or kitchen knives do you um Dude, so what's your go-to 
my girl is afraid to use my actual knives, right? She's like, fucking these things cost so much money. So she went and bought some like kitchen mates that have all like rusted up and they're all fucked up and shit. From a garage um, sale or something? No, I think it was from Amazon. Oh, okay. a, a, a garage sale will be funnier, but I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Amazon or like Walmart or some stupid shit. Um, but no, I've, for the most part, just use my regular ass knives. Um, the main knife I use is the, uh, fuck, what's it called? Bradford Guardian, I believe it's the four or four point five. Um, I love using that knife for the kitchen. What the, what blade shape is that? I can't think of it. So, I believe that one's a drop point. Okay. I have a lot of knives, dog. I forget about shit. <laughs> you don't have any um any chef knives at all. So uh, again, I have chef knives. Um, they're just shitty ass ones that my girl bought, so she didn't have to use my expensive ass stuff. And yeah. they're just kitchen mates. They're just little shitty ass. Like you buy like a pack of like five for like 10 bucks. Some of those and, old shitty ones though, like the ones that were like uh, with the wooden handle, some of those are pretty dope. These are not. I understand. <laughs> these are shit. I get it. You know, the plastic <laughs> handled ones. I get it. Um, We got those too. I know. We yeah, got some really shitty Yeah. The, the, the uh, steel just says stainless. Yeah. It just says. Just, they don't even say stainless. Don't say yeah, all, all it says is question mark. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm only blessed to have a couple good kitchen knives. One, because, um, uh, who was it? Um, damn it. I can't even think of who it's from now. Um, fuck the, the knives ship or chef knives to go. Sorry. Chef knives to go. I got one of those and then I, um, I should have one coming from another knife company actually right now. And then I got a Victorinox that's actually pretty dope. That one's pretty cool, but all the rest are all shit. I want to get a good paring knife. Um, I think that, because that's like one of the most useful knives in the kitchen is a good paring knife. Um, but I also use, you know, just. Yeah, folders. Just good folders. Good I folders. I too. Yeah, because they're fucking sharp, and I know yeah. they're going to cut. I know they're going to do the damn job well. Yeah, the uh, the uh, pair of three has prepared many meals. Yeah, I've, um, I, my. It, my old go-to was a um, the Civivi Picaro because it's so thin and slicey and it's a four-inch blade, so it just wound up working out really good. But I've used just about everything I have. Um, and I do like those chef knives, though, man. They're pretty dope. Uh, the, that, that chef knives to go on is, is pretty awesome. I do like it quite a bit. Hey, Brandon, I probably have 15 knives and 14C28N right now, so I get it, dude. Yeah, I love me some 14 C. Um, oh, what company was it? Damn it, I can't even think of it now because I just seen it on um, with Mike Hamler. But uh, there's a company making a badass chef knife, um, a custom in uh, 14 C 28 on. It looks so badass. The people that doubt the un wait the inevitable will be the ones to fall first because they are clearly not prepared well enough. What more do you need to see? Yeah. The people that do that are in denial and always say that that'll never happen. That'll never happen. That'll never happen are the ones that do wind up getting caught with their pants down. And a lot of other people will too. Even the people that are prepared because it's hard to prepare for something that everybody else isn't to, you know, it's very difficult to do that. Hey, to be fair, I was one of those guys during the pandemic wiping my ass with, with, with a, a shower hose. So, it. like, I mean, I, I get it. That's who it is, my target. Yeah, and I'm fully wow. aware of that, so. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's that's kind of the shitty situation that you get into. Literally. You need, <laughs> right, literally. You need people around you that are also prepared, being prepared, and are willing to, to put forth effort into, like, you almost need to set up a plan. Like, listen. We need like 10 good people that at this point, whatever this line is, right? Set up this line. Like this is the line. When we get to this line, we're getting together and we're doing X, Y, and Z. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And if you don't have those people, um, then it, it's going to be very difficult once that line comes to. Once you get to that line and you go past and it gets past that line, now it's almost too late to prepare for those things or to talk to people, communicate, set up your things. Like right now, if fucking social media just fell, think about all these people talking about being prepared, a lot of them would be fucked. Like even just without that, like that thing, because now they don't have the connections like that they had. They don't have the ability to talk to all these people and like 
you know, you're running in the dark. But yes, Tactile Turn has that's the one with the 14C28N that they have coming out. It looks pretty badass. Jared, I've been awake for 43. I don't know what that is, but dude, 43 crazy euros. Medical. <clears throat> for 40 wait i've been awake for 43 euros due to crazy medical issues meds in the worst fucking pain you can imagine so been self-medicating and binge watching all your videos to keep it up thank you man i appreciate you watching the channel i hope you do get better i hope things turn around for you that does suck um i appreciate you watching though man i'm sorry to hear hear your story man um, ten dollars a week on rice and beans is a cheap, easy place to start. Yeah, rice is definitely something you can uh, you can save up because it's uh, a lot of carbs, basically. Um, so, but yeah, it's definitely something you can uh, survive on. You're gonna want some good proteins, though. Um, yes, it's on Kickstarter. Is it on Kickstarter? I didn't know that. Um, be prepared for about 72 hours in case something happens is something everyone should do. I feel like uh, when it gets down to 72 hours, you're fucked. A little bit. 72 hours ain't nothing. Ah, oh, spam. I kind of wish that the internet would shut down. Um, would be interesting to see what would happen. A lot of bad shit. <laughs> um, I think... Um, or possibly a lot of good shit, man, because well, the, internet, the, the internet's brought a lot of hell to us. I agree. No, I agree. I think, like, okay, so, like, I think certain parts of, um, like, say, uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, things like that, I think if all that shut down, I absolutely agree. I think that a lot of great things would happen. However, I think that the problem would be that even though they are, like, censoring a lot of shit and everything else, I think it would be impossible for people to get actual good information and I think that that's where, like, things would get fucked up. So then it'd be possible for other entities to, to, to come out from underneath you and you wouldn't know it, right? Like, it'd be hard to know what the fuck is going on. But I do agree, though, like, that it has hurt us so much because it's being used against us. Like, at first it, it lured us in, like, dog food, and now it's just, like, slowly being poisoned, you know? Pretty much. Um. <clears throat> Folks got zero patience. No knives for us with no internet. <laughs> That's all everybody's worried about. But what about the knives? But what about Reddit? <laughs> <laughs> no, not, no, more, no more knife swap. Okay, so. Hey, no Jared, hold, hold on. Hold on one second, brother. What? It's hot as a motherfucker in this take house. I'm going to take off the sweater. Do what you got to do. Um, is it cool? I appreciate you making the vids, mate, regard from England. Shout out to England. England's in the house. Awesome. Ooh, the USA says, "Howdy." I never use the word "howdy" though. Um, when well, when your power grid is connected to the internet, it's not gonna be good. I spent ten years building transformers. We in trouble with internet crashes. My stepfather works um for Comed, and uh, he actually is. The, he's done everything there. He's like one of the higher ups now, and he's uh, a dispatcher. And um, there's been a couple times I've had to use him from some of my other my old properties and everything um, with power going out and things like that. But yeah, if the power grid goes out, yeah, that's that's definitely a, a bad sign, right? I think there would be literally half the population sitting there waiting for it to turn back on. They'd be like, "It's gonna turn back on any minute, sweetheart. Any minute. <laughs> Just keep melting your candle." Um. What's up, Oregon? England with the two entries. Um, all right, so you're on a can you hear me? No, he's he doesn't have his headphones in yet. Next, we're taking a road trip, ladies and gentlemen. Think about what is your road trip knife. All right. <clears throat> all right, Much Rebel. better. So you're on a road trip, or you're preparing for a road trip. You know you're about to take a road trip cross country. What is your road trip knife? Now, I, I'll tell you where I got this from, first of all. I was listening to um, Knife Junkie's podcast, and he was talking about, and this was actually just right before this. I wrote this one down. Um, he was talking about how he was preparing for a road trip, and he said he always brings his SOCOM Elite. And one thing I think I've thought about a lot, but 
if he really made me think about it, he says he always brings his SOCOM because it has a glass breaker on the back. Because he always thinks about what if, you know, somebody runs us off the road? What if we get into an accident and I need to break myself out of the car? He's like, I'd want to have a glass breaker on me. So that's why he carries that knife. Um, what would you carry for your road trip, EDC? All right, what is it? Uh, it is a Tops Tex Creek uh, CPN 154 steel. Nice. Red and black contoured carbon fiber. Feels really good in hand. It has a dangler so it can hang off the fucking seat, not into my goddamn stomach. And uh, I actually did recently go, go cross country and I carried this knife the whole time. And That's it's fucking, fucking fantastic. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think um, I've rolled in cars and wound up upside down. And, uh, you know, yeah, that would be a shitty situation. I think that is one, like, if you're going to think of the things that you're going to run into, right, that you want to possibly be prepared for, I think breaking glass might be one of them going cross country. Like I said, I, I've definitely been in rolled cars and been upside down. And having a glass breaker is a smart idea. Now, I've seen this thing on Instagram. You might have seen this, too. It's a bracelet. I don't really wear bracelets. Sometimes I wear watches, but it's a bracelet and it has a little, um, I, don't, I don't know if it's ceramic or what it is. It might be metal, but it's this little round disc that's on the cord. And all you got to do is you just put it between your fingers, stretch it out like a rubber band. You just basically go like this with it and go like that against glass and it'll just shatter glass, but it just stays right on your wrist. You always have it. So if you do roll in a car, you just take it off, go like that, and pow, break yourself out. That was pretty interesting. I thought about, like, man, that'd be kind of cool to, like, on a fixed blade, like something like you were talking about, to have, like, on a, I don't know, lanyard or something like that or something tied to it. So um, I have what's called a life hammer in my car. I have uh -huh. um, I have one in my car and two in my girl's car. Nice. Which has like a little piston piece that you can basically put on the window and you can tap a button and it fires into it. If that doesn't work on the other side, they're just a regular ass glass breaker. Damn. On the bo bottom of it is a seatbelt cutter. Nice. So that, that's smart to have in your car for sure. My stupid ass actually drove into a river at one point in time. And once, if you have, if you have electric locks, once it starts to submerge, you're pretty much fucked. You have to wait for the cabin to pressurize and then pop yep. out. And yep. happen one time, it'll never happen again. No. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm going to go pop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Something that people, um, like I always thought about it because I've never went underwater. I've been on like floating devices that went underwater, like jet skis and things like that, but never a car. Right. And scary always, shit. Well, I always thought about that. I understand it's very scary for sure. Well, my first thing would be to relax, get my heart rate down because I know I got to let the, the car fill up, let the car fill up. And then, um, you know, proceed to open the door after it fills up and everything else. But I want, because you lose air or oxygen faster if your heart rate's going like this. So relaxing and just staying calm is going to be the most important part. My yeah, I, I mean, I could lie be like, yeah, you know, I took a deep breath. Nope. I was like, ah! <laughs> fucking punching the window. <laughs> Yeah, um, that man, they and, don't and, break until it's done. You ain't yeah, gonna no. break the glass. Um, yeah, I, I was, I was convinced. Uh, I'm a pretty big guy. I was convinced I could break it. I ain't fucking do this. I, shit. I, 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 I fucking cracked it and then spiderwebbed into like this little shit that I wasn't. Then didn't, didn't go any further than that. Yeah. And we just yeah. cut my hand up. How I've taken objects and tried to break windows like on the outside, trying to hit them and had them not fucking break. Let alone being on the inside where you can't even get a lot of leverage. Like a windshield yeah. breaks a lot easier than a side, um, than you know, a door window, way easier. Um, Does it really? I, yes, so much. I didn't. I, I actually did not know that. I thought. I thought it was yeah. the opposite. No, no, it's because. Well, it depends on what year. Let me just be clear. Like back in the days, yeah, the side ones broke, but now the the way they have the glass, that because of because of impacts from cars, that glass is actually made not to break on like big impact. That's why you need, you want a glass breaker. So you can take, I've taken a hammer and fucking like just bash it. Finally it broke, but it did take, it took way more swings than you would think. Right. Like it took like three or four swings. Now don't get me wrong. I'm sure like if you just went at it really good, you could probably get it in one, but it's a lot harder to do than like the windshield windshield. You, 
it's not that hard to break a windshield. Windshields are pretty easy. Um, but huh. yeah, like okay. sometimes now, now I know. <laughs> like people with rings on, like they probably got a better chance because um breaking like a side window, like the reason why a piece of ceramic, a little tiny piece of ceramic, you can just throw it at a window and it'll shatter. The reason why is because in order to break a piece of glass like that, that's tempered and like that style of glass. That you need something with a pinpoint, something very, very tiny. So like a little crushed piece of ceramic, just a little tiny piece of ceramic this big, will go, will just shatter it. But then your fist just fucking hammer and it won't do nothing. Yeah. Right? It, it's just because of the size of the object. It needs to be a small pinpoint object. Um, what's up, Richie? Richie's in here. What's up, Richie? B shout out to knife modders. Go check them out. Even if Lindy lose a traitor, go check them out. They're good people. Um, you did something wrong because it's the easiest way to break glass. What are you talking about? I, you didn't even explain what you meant by that. Um, by me, by me punching oh, it. I punched out the side of a window in a Nissan pickup when I locked my keys, and I've broken lots of them too. And I've gotten into like I um, depends on the one. Like I said, depends on the year. A lot of the newer cars now have like it's protective glass. Go fucking practice. Trust me. Like I, I tried this on a fucking Suburban like just a couple years ago with a hammer. Like I've done this. I, I've broken probably 15 or 20. And you can even ask Breeze how many fucking cars we've buried, wrecked, blown up, fucking everything. And there's some that are very easy. Jesus and Christ. Some, yeah. Yeah, for sure. We we actually got um the, the, the property while I'm getting in trouble, we had to unbury like 15 cars at one point um but uh but yeah i've had some that are very easy some that like they broke pretty easily and i've had some that it was like almost it's not impossible but you know it took a lot more effort than i would have thought so i'm saying like i did one right it was a, um a suburban and i had a, a club and i was hitting the side of it and it wouldn't shatter for nothing one hit on the windshield just went right through though just psh- the whole fucking thing well not like all the way through but it's shattered right and now i just have to keep hitting to go through because it never shatters like um like you think like it stays together because there's a film over it that's the protectant you know in order to get through it like even with a glass breaker it shatters but it's usually all in one piece some just shatter and go all the way out like i got shot at one time and the whole thing just shattered all the way down Right, but I've seen tons of bullet holes through glass where it's just the hole and the rest yep. is shattered. It depends on what car, what model, what year, if it's got the protectant layer, um, all kinds of shit. There's lots of factors. So some, so just because you had one doesn't mean like that they're all like that. Um, because like the old cars, man, you used to be able just to break them easily, like nothing. Like they were literally so easy to break, but that was the problem. Um, because they uh people could just break into them easily you know you could just go by and just okay. knock out a window so easily now it's not that easy to just knock out a window and steal the shit on the inside of a car um here's breeze buried cars make good high bank corners in the racetrack facts <laughs> Fact. <Jeez. laughs> yeah. that's fucking awesome yeah it's a good story um one got me kicked out that night because I wouldn't buy a dance from her. Okay, these guys are talking about strippers. <laughs> what are you guys doing in the comment section? Going around the racetrack in the back of no window cargo van with 10 of your buddies in the back is the best. Fucking, I remember one time Breeze, <laughs> he had a, he took the back of his, um, he had this pickup truck and he put plastic in the back. Of it and then made a fucking swimming pool in the back, drive the around fuck? town with people in the back like it was like a jacuzzi. But when he turns corners, you know, water it goes like this. So when he turns corners, water's just psh, out the side. But yeah, we um we used to have like a, a racetrack in the backyard, and um we used to take cars back there, and a lot of cars never made it out. They would literally be totaled. Like we'd wreck them, destroy them, take a um a bobcat to them and crush them, take a 580 or whatever, and just crush them down to flat, dig a hole and bury them. Well, we need, we needed berms for, to go around the racetrack. So we 
bury cars there and then put dirt on them so that we could literally build up the corners. So when we're going around the, the, the turns, you know, you can use the, the turns as a berm to go around. Well, it wound <laughs> up being, I don't know how many cars, like I said, like 15 of them that were actually buried. Um, not yeah. including other ones, but yeah, then the city, because it wasn't our property, first of all. This was not our property. So the city wound up seeing, doing like some type of... Um, um, not excavating, but like they were like checking lines or whatever, checking shit. And they seen like these people in this, in this property that didn't, because the owner wasn't there or anything. So they seen people racing a, a monster truck and a four wheeler around this little track and a literal monster truck. And it even said Tonka truck on the back of it. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, they showed up and, uh, seen all these damn cars like they seen bumpers sticking out of the ground like all these fucking bumpers are everywhere sticking out of the ground and yeah we had to dig them all out damn. um no it's not 9 p.m yet i know we're getting close to it okay sorry 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 <laughs> um thoughts on recurbs back to nine we only have a few more minutes ladies and gentlemen sorry i went on a little rant there I figured um I they are great for processing material uh pain in the ass to sharpen so another one of those knives that I'll get in hand, I will never sharpen it. I'll just, I'll dole it out and either sell it or fucking send it to somebody else to sharpen. Do you have any? I have a couple Emerson's. Um, I have the Karam that I just showed you. And uh, I believe my DSK is also a uh, recurve. Got you, got you. Um. Also, I uh, just took an edible a little bit ago, and I've been on acid for the last two and a half hours. So, like, this might get interesting soon. <laughs> okay. Well, then uh, we'll, just, uh, we'll just do story time a little early. Um, where are we at? We only got, like, 13 more minutes. Oh, no, dude. Well, I can do this shit all night. I'm just saying. I'm I might just stare off, stare off into space and start looking at weird shit around me. Right. Okay. Um, don't forget to like, drop a like, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, i seen this... Uh, because this just made me think about like weird blade. Ring shit. that oh. bell, goddammit. Ring that Patrick! fucking bell. What's up, bud? There you go. The donation, Patrick. I appreciate it. Um, so I seen this um this little clip. It was just a little TikTok clip. Uh oh. Should I ring my bell? No, don't do that. <laughs> Put that behind you. <laughs> my girl was so so mad. <laughs> MILF folders and recurves. I want hardcore hardware's MILF folders in recurve. Okay. This shit taint free. Hit the motherfucking like button or the moderators will hunt you down and tell you why Canada has it in for the internet. There hey, you Phil, go. are you asking what's behind me or what's behind Jared? Because what's behind Jared is a shitty moving blanket. Yep. <laughs> Five of them. What if I spray one micron spray on my jeans and just strap it and go? Maybe might not be a bad idea. Shit. Just have one little area on your jeans. That's uh, a strapping area. Uh, sh uh, Shane, my leg is still fucked up. Um, it's not as bad as it was. It's still pretty damn bruised. Again, it has like big ass like yellow splotches around it. It's pretty enter entertaining looking. But it is starting to get better finally. Fucking yeah, it a, looked pretty a week, two weeks later. Day. Um, I've only handled one Max Ace, and that was the Max Ace Goliath. Um, that's the only I love think that that's knife. The only, yeah, I know it's such a good knife. I was surprised how good it was for what's like a hundred bucks or something, eighty bucks. I forget, but I just got one in a M390 in my Carta for like one twenty. Damn, that's good, my Carta too. Yeah, there's his leg right there. So let's not do that again. That looks devastating. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Max A, so I do need to get more of their models on the channel, but I know I've never heard or seen the Kestrel. And if I have, I, uh, I don't remember. Yes, that was Savage. Um, I'll buy and mail you any bell you want. If you don't hurt yourself anymore, <laughs> you can buy any fucking bell you want. It better be a, it better be a badass bell, man. Um. I'm going to be selling my Max Ace Babylon. I don't know that one either. I don't know any of these Max Aces. 
Um, I see them when I see them. I watch the video on them, and then it just in one ear and out, or in you know my mind and out. So I remembered the the um the Goliath just because like it stood out to me massive. Like I just I thought it looked really cool. I I seen how big it was, so that was the one thing I was kind of worried about because it is a it's a it's not a knife you normally take out in front of people. That's a knife you could you would do good in your kitchen because it's so damn big. It's a big motherfucker. It's like I have, I have two of them. Dang, see, if I have one. Two in of them, a, you know it's a big fucking knife. Yeah, I have one in G10 and Zerkutai, and another one in titanium and micarta. Grateful Panic. That was the last live me and him did together. Every donation he hit himself with a billy club, not <laughs> not lightly either. Obviously. <laughs> A monkey edge, frag pattern, RMJ, tactical tire thumper. Um, Jim, I, I the only James brands that I've tried, I tried some when I was in Colorado. And they they were little, like they were there were nothing special, and they were way overpriced. Now that being said, that new integral that React did looks amazing. And everybody says it's amazing. I have no doubt that it's not amazing because React did it. All the knives that I've ever tried from from them were they were not worth the money. Even like the sixty dollar ones, I seen this. It was just a little tiny slip joint folder. It was a nothing. I think it was four forty C, and they wanted sixty bucks for it. Like it was just way too cheap for the price. I mean, it wasn't a cheap knife. The knife was built good, but it wasn't worth the money. Yep, a button lock. It, and it's badass, but I need to make room for more knives. It's a button lock, huh? I bought the Tucson button lock like five weeks ago. I know I'm waiting on a, um, a Tucson right now. I'm in contact with Tucson trying to get the plug right now so that I can have uh, the brand new models before they drop or right when they drop on the channel. We'll see what happens. Um, so I seen this video on... Uh, I think it was TikTok. Ring that goddamn bell, Jared. Ring that bitch. D Bass, Jared and Kyle. I was. Whoops. I was. The trying... bell is broken. The bell is down. <laughs> Where was the bell? I was trying to drop some serious dough on a new knife. I was thinking about a whole haptic or a Koenig area. So, what are you guys' thoughts? Both, you can't go wrong with both, are going to be hard to find. If you have the opportunity to get either one of them, um, if I if it was a Koenig area, it's my opinion, make sure it's the newer version because that that version. Is and Jared version. has died, ladies and gentlemen. He's apparently frozen. Am I frozen? I now think. you're good. Okay. And the the Holt knives, in my opinion, both are amazing flippers. Both of them are amazing flippers. But that Holt man, something to do with that that detent nub that they have on there. The action is insane. It's so good. That's the best flipper I've ever felt in my life is on a Holt. So either one, you can't go wrong with them. I think they're both great options. Um, I did not like the Holt haptic. The ergonomics for me were not quite there. Um, I would prefer the uh, Arius over a Holt, ha over a Holt haptic. Um, a Spectre, I prefer Spectre, a Spectre over a uh, Arius though for sure. But those are fucking hard to find. Like... Okay, okay, knife sergeant. So I th I thought the same thing, but I figured it, it wasn't it wouldn't hurt to take a shot, right? So I contacted them. They did contact me back. Told me to email them. I emailed them. Talked to them on email. They sent me a list of four knives. Said this is our newest ones. Blah blah blah. I'm probably gonna have to pay for them, but if I can at least just buy them at cost, the ones I want and get them shipped to me directly, so that I don't have to bid and things like that. Then it's a win-win at least. Yes, I'm still paying, but at least I'm not paying. I'm not like I just bought one and I paid an outrageous amount just because I wanted it so bad. I don't want to do that. I mean, it was an, it's an outrageous. I'm embarrassed to say how much I paid for this thing, but it's just because I liked it so much. I wanted it bad. So if I if I can just pay for them outright and just pay it cost, like I don't know what cost would be for them, but I gotta imagine it's at least better than what the fuck just happened. So we'll see. I, 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 um, but yeah, I figured that anyways, but I figured, like I said, the worst case scenario, they tell me to get fucked. So, um, we are six minutes away. Knife LTK did get one to review and they ended up making 120 and he's going to get 12 to sell himself. Yeah. That's his own model though. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, but Jared, what if I'm poor? Wait, what? What if I'm poor? What should I buy if I'm poor? Tri-State EDC. What's up, brother? Definitely go and sub to Tri-State EDC. If you do anything today, go and sub to Tri-State EDC. He's going to be on the channel here pretty soon, so you guys might as well go sub now and learn about him so you guys will know when he's on the channel. Where's so my goddamn shout-out at, huh? I need the subs. <laughs> I, I, I could really give a fuck. Yeah. Sh well, shout out to Red Wolf EDC. Go sub to his channel. You guys see him in front of you. Um, so what should he buy if he's poor? I would say, personally, honestly, uh, uh, two cent is the best bang for your buck. You're not going to get a better bang for your buck. You just can't. Like there's, Especially if you know which ones to get. There's over 300. So, yes, there's about 290 bad ones, right? <laughs> so, but that means there's like, I don't know. So many really, really good ones. I can think of at least 10 that are, they just knocked it out of the park. React quality. They're just insanely good. So if you get one of those, you're, you're going to be impressed. You can't go wrong with those ones. Um, other than that, obviously, all the, the good makers. I mean, we, Savivi, uh, Kubi is really good. Uh, if you're going to go USA, I mean, you're usually not going USA if you're poor. Uh, my concepts are great. Concepts does they got some good models. They're all a tiny bit not overpriced. I'm not gonna say overpriced, but you they're, they're worth what they're charging. But you don't feel not always. There are some good ones that you do feel like you're getting more than you paid for. But Tucson, you almost always feel like you're getting more than you paid for. With Concept, you feel like it's a it's a it's decent, but. Some companies you like to deal with because you feel like you're getting so much more than you're paying. I just ordered the Tucson TS228 Jelly Jerry design. Yes, get one of those he's thinking about in his mind. I can name some off, um, but uh, but then we wouldn't have a conversation when you come on, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> the fuck? Bang. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> that was hella weird. Quentin is definitely coming around. I'm glad we talked things out. Okay, I don't know what that's about. Okay, so we are right there at that time. I know we have a couple more minutes. So um, should I tell my story first, or do you want to go through some of your stories? I don't know, man. If y'all want to ask me what you want to know, uh, I'll be honest and tell you stories, but be, so careful, just, what, be, just, be careful what you ask. Okay, I'll just ask. The you question. might get Jared demonetized. This thing's already probably demonetized. Um, <laughs> so, first question: um, Where did you get shot, and what happened the first time? I've been shot three times. I've been shot in the stomach. I've been shot in the shoulder. And I got shot in the motherfucking ass, which is by far the worst one, by the way. It broke my goddamn pelvis. I was in a rape pose for four and a half months. Like, oh, fuck did you that. Say a rape? A rape pose? Yes. <laughs> Literally, I broke my pelvis, dog. So I'm like this. Oh fuck! That <laughs> sucks. I have a fucking cast from going from my like mid stomach down to like my mid my mid thigh, and I'm just like this. <laughs> so, what happened? First time, first shot. Were, were, were they all three separate, or was it two different occasions? Two shots, one one. Right? They two were all shots, three separate. All three were separate. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, what happened the first time? So the first time is actually when I got shot in the stomach, which is by a friend of mine who got really, really heavily into dope, uh, tried to rob another friend of my ass and his ass was so fucking far, right? The dude's right in front of him. This dude is so fucking high. He aims over his shoulder and fucking shoots through a wall and it hits my ass. Mm -hmm. So pretty anti, anti climactic story, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, basically what I told the cops is that it's a drive-by. don't know how it happened. I was just sitting here on the, on, on the house. Sorry, officer. The, the usual story. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the one when they show up, they're like, yeah, we've heard that one before. Now, like, do you have any enemies? Probably. Do you know their names? If I did, they wouldn't be enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the next one? Um, the next one is me getting shot in the ass, which is, that one is literally a drive-by, right? But this shit is aimed at my ass and a few of my friends because I used literally. to sell drugs. I used to sell drugs. <laughs> they literally, um, I used to sell drugs and a few other different things. Right. 
So fucking, um, I'm taking off running. It ricocheted off a building, to be clear. It didn't hit me direct, but it ricocheted, and I thought I shit myself. Like, that was my greatest concern. Everyone's like, man, are you okay? I'm like trying to like grab a sweater to cover my fucking ass. Because when you get hit, when you get shot, like for me anyways, it doesn't fucking hurt. At least not then. There's a weird sensation. Like, you know, something's wrong, but you don't know quite what that is. And in this case, I knew something was wrong and my pants were wet. So I'm like, I either shit on myself or I pissed on myself and I'm embarrassed of either one. So I was like, nobody look at me. And I tried to make, make try to make my way home or whatever. And she had a buddy of mine fucking threw me in the car. He's like, bro, you need to get your ass out of here. And uh, I'm like, no, dog, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. He's like, you're not fine. What's wrong with you? I'm like, dog, dog, I'm sorry, man. But like, I, I fucking shit myself. I was in your car. And I was like, bro, you did not shit yourself. Unless you're just shit and straight fucking Kool-Aid, dog. You did not shit yeah. yourself. You're right, going to the right. hospital. Right, right. I was like, oh, and I reached back and I actually felt my ass. And I was like, oh. <laughs> damn, damn. Yeah, Kara actually got hit in the ankle with, um, with ricochet or... Uh, What's that called um, when uh, the stuff uh, from where it hit uh, flies? I'm trying to think what it's called. Um, shrapnel? Shrapnel, yeah, in the angle. Uh, but uh, third time, what happened? Uh, the third time is the fucking shoulder, which is the one that is pretty fucked up. Um, I was getting shot at. I don't know why. It was, this is like years after I stopped being a criminal, right? I was, I was, I was a fuck up for a long ass time, went to prison, did some other shit. I had my daughter, got clean. And I was literally at a concert with some friends of mine in Frisco. And uh, someone goes, fuck you, Irish, which is what my actual nickname used to be was Irish because, you know, fucking red hair and shit. Um, and they, and, and uh, they start spraying. And I got hit one time again in the shoulder. Um, the bullet had enough force to be able to go in and not to go out. So that thing is still on my shoulder this fucking day, which when it gets cold, man, and the fucking the winter time's coming, dude. Like in the summertime, it's not that bad. When that metal gets cold in my actual fucking body, dude. Oh my, that shit hurts so fucking bad. So, oh, you want to know? Did you have shrapnel in the cheeks? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Um, uh, so it went in my fucking, in like my like kind of like the right side of my ass cheek, went upwards, and it came out kind of like a little bit below my hip. Missed the dick fucking by not that much. I mean, it was like, it was the least that's couple long. inches, but like for me, that's, that's, that's enough. Like Russ said that's close shot in the leg. It was a ricochet off a storm drain pipe from my friend being an idiot. Popped the bullet out of my leg, like a zit. Um, I did that, uh, once with the dog that got, um, shot a couple times in the, in the hip. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, Kara got one. Um, I don't remember if it was uh, off of the rim of a car or if it was like off the asphalt or whatever. But the the ricochet um, or the, you know, the, <laughs> the ankle. Sorry, <laughs> I just went and pissed. Came back to it missed my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I never you're telling your story. That was just funny. No, it's all right. Um. No, he's hilarious. Um, me and him uh, had a really good live uh, the other day on Lefty's Live. Um, had a good time with him. Um, I got shot in ass, and yeah, it really hurts. Even though bullet I took was a BB, I've been hit by I've been hit by some BBs, some um, ricochet and full on. Um, but yeah, what's up, Stasa Twenty Three's in the house. Shout out to Stasa Twenty Three. There you is better be sub to Stasa Twenty Three. What's up, Sasa? Man, there is a lot of... I'm, like, reading the comments, bro. A lot of people got shot in the ass. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's a commonplace. People are usually running from the guy. Oh, I was uh, definitely I know running. a guy who got shot by his dad, not me, um, even though you guys would probably think, knowing some of the stories I've told you about my dad, uh, but uh, I actually watched him shoot at my cousin through a wall while he was sleeping in another room because he wouldn't wake up. My dad, though, was like... Yeah, because he was screaming. Like, he's screaming, right? I walk in the house because I'm at my house. I come by, you know, I walk in the door, and I hear him just fucking screaming. And I walk in. He's heated. My dad was a paraplegic, by the way. And he pulls himself up on this thing. He's like, pulls up and looks at me. He's like, where the fuck is he sleeping? You know, I was like, who? And he goes, your cousin, right? No names, right? And um, I said, I said, what do you mean? He goes, what wall does he sleep on? Because he can't get in that room. And I said, right there. He fucking pulls out his gun. Bow, bow, bow. 
start shooting what fucking holes fuck? through the wall. Yeah. My cousin comes out. His hair is like like this because he just woke up, right? He just woke up fucking hair. He's like, what the fuck is going on? And my dad's like, I want a fucking poster of that motherfucker to hang on that wall. So every time he won't wake up, I can shoot at the fucking poster. You know, like to wake his ass up shooting holes through the wall. What the fuck? Crazy as fuck. Yeah, but, uh, but I knew a guy, though, that um, I don't remember the whole story exactly how it went but his son was coming through the um the door and uh his dad i think was trying to prank him and uh it was a a 410 shotgun and he shot it at the floor because this was like some old hillbilly shit and shot it at the floor but it wound up going through the door and shooting his son in the ankle as he was coming through the floor yeah fucked his ass up (laughs) Uh, California just banned all gas-powered lawnmowers and equipment. What the fuck? They love banning things. Yes, they do. They that, Did they really? What the fuck? Hey, keep voting the way you guys do, you motherfuckers. Keep Bro, I don't vote for these motherfuckers. Like, I'm not a liberal. Like, <laughs> I, I don't get it. Listen, I, I, I want to tell everybody right now, like, the, the discussion me and uh, Ray had on his channel like, I love the guy to death. Like, that was not an argument whatsoever. It was just a discussion. Me and him did get into politics a bit. And even, like, the discussion, like, that um, that we had about, um, like, the whole Texas thing and, like, the information they had on it was completely wrong. Like, right after the live, I looked up all the information. I even sent him the link and said, you can look this up on 20 different fucking things. And you guys were completely off on the information because it always seems that the information is always skewed from that side, trying to get you to believe narratives and just crazy shit. But the things that they were saying, and they were like full fledged convinced, like that this is how this was. And like, this was the laws now and all this. And I'm like, that is not the way it is. Like that, that's not how it goes. Like, trust me, I just read this shit. This is not how it goes, but I sent them a link just to show them. But it gets crazy, man. It gets crazy. And I, I love the guy to death. And I know we agree on 99.9% of things. We really do. The only thing we don't agree on hey, is I think. The shut bell- up and ring that goddamn bell. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the vids, Jared, for answering my questions. We can. Wait, can we ever get a tour of all your knives and how you store display them? Keep up the work, mate. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. One more bell. Thank you. Um, I actually. He keisters them all. I keister them all, at least half of them. But the ones I don't keister, I have a uh, knife chest um, that somebody, that Mr. Amazing sent me. There's a video on the chest if you want to see it. It's uh, um, an EDC chest or um, a tool chest. Uh, it's a uh, Gerst, Gerstner, a Gerstner chest. Um, Gerstner and Sons. Yeah, you can look it up on my channel, but yes, I do have a video coming soon. As soon as I get some knives back, it'll probably be in a couple months, I'm going to do a full EDC or a full knife collection video. I usually do a full knife collection video once a year. Can I just say that calling somebody Mr. Wonderful sounds gay as fuck. Like, Mr. Mr. Wonderful Wonderful sent that. Mr. Amazing is Mr. Amazing, not Mr. Wonderful. Get it right. Mr. Amazing also sounds bad. Like. Well, he does amazing shit for the channel, so it's what I came up with. All good, brother. But yeah, the 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 uh, Gerstner. And... <laughs> but yeah, the uh, Gerstner and Sons chest is awesome. I have one of those too. That's hilarious. It's, it has survived two different lifetimes. So it says you say chest, and I think of boobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Anyways, okay, right. finish finish your story about how much you hate Ray. Um, no, I love Ray. I love I thought, Ray. And that it's was a it. joke. That's, it's that's a joke, bro. Say. It's a I joke. Just, <laughs> I did want to actually bring it up because I seen comments in his thing. I seen one comment where somebody was like, um, oh, I was loving the conversation. So you guys, you know, went politics or whatever. And then I had to, can't, you know, get out. But the way I look at it is that, man, if we don't start having these fucking conversations, all of us are turning our backs from having these conversations. Why the fuck do you think we're in this you know, place to begin with? It's because we're not discussing things. All of history, we've discussed things. We've had freedom of speech and have talked things out. Right now, it's like everybody wants to say, oh, I don't want to hear it. You know, like they get enough of it from the media, right? Fuck the media. Stop listening to that shit. Have discussions with real people. 
because yep. all this media bullshit where you're getting information is all biased. All of them have a narrative. So stop doing that. Discuss things with your friends because then you might not have a friend that fucking is actually a fucking uh, that leans more to the right, but thinks he leans on the left. Right. And that's how I feel about that. I feel like my friend leans more on the fucking right, but thinks he leans on the left, which he can lean whichever way he wants. But no, I believe you should know what you're voting for, not lies, because a lot of it is lies. And you think you're voting for something you're not. You actually do. Everybody thinks they're voting for something they're not. I'm not going into it no more. I'm sorry, guys. That was my one second or one minute political rant. Next story. So getting stabbed. Hey, just saying, I live in Liberalville, California, where they, have, where, they, where, where they have free range to do whatever the fuck they want to. This whole goddamn state is a goddamn fucking shithole, especially right now. So Every, every yeah. liberal or Democrat-ran city in America is a shithole. 90% of them. Like, the worst places in America are, are Democrat-ran. It's just a fact. There's, there's, no, there's no argument there. It's a fact. Anyways, getting stabbed, brother. <laughs> which stabbed. which one, bro? There's quite first, a few of those. Do you want to talk first about first. like a like a full on stab, or like a superficial prison stab with the little I, two I want inch the blade? Superficial prison stab first. I want the superficial prison stab first. Which one? You want to hear about riots? You want to hear about removals? You want to hear about heart checks? You want to hear um, about just a straight up combat scenario? Like, no, this I, is... I want I want the riot. I want the riot. Uh, which one? <laughs> The, the worst one actually here let's let's just talk about the very first riot. Right. so things are escalating a lot with they call them the the others right to be clear in california if you're a white boy you have to identify with just yourself you're either it's just the white guys and then it's randomly the mexicans uh s southerners and um they call them uh paisas but like just basically like mexicans like really yeah. deep deep border mexicans yeah. Basically, it's a bunch of racist ass shit. To be clear, I'm not I fucking know, racist. That symbol across from me, people think means I'm racist. It's fucking not. I'm a pagan. Pagan. Like, fuck a skinhead. All right. Um, anyways, so things start escalating, right? I, I don't remember exactly what triggered it, but everything started getting really, really tense. Because you want to know and, what yard is this? What yard is this we're talking about right now? Oh, uh, this one would be a uh, DVI. Um, and I was in, I believe it was still J wing at that point in time. Cause this is still reception, not J wing, um, H wing. If you want to look, want to look my ass up, my CDCR number is a W seven, two, two, zero. I ain't hiding shit. Feel free to fact check my ass. Anyway, anyways, yeah. um, so things are starting to get pretty intense. Right. And a buddy of mine named Shane, not going to say his last name, uh, hit, hits me up and hey, bro, I know it's your first term, at least being in, you know, prison um things are getting really really tense i'm gonna hand you this he hands me a little like pre-made knife thing or whatever it's not doesn't have an edge on it he's like sharpen the, sharpen this up bro just carry it on you like things are gonna get bad that night all you heard was this all night all i heard was that that's from right, everybody right. from no, everybody that's yeah that's my point i'm saying everybody that's all you heard all night was just scratching all night go ahead keep telling the story yep. I'm sorry. and and then like fucking maybe I don't know, like two hours from wreck, right? The uh, the porter comes through to all the white boys and goes, hey, it's going down, bro. Um, we're going to hit yard as soon as the actual buzzer hits for yard being called, like it's fucking on. It's Mando. Every single person needs to come to the yard. If you don't, we're going to kill you. Damn. So I'm like, hey, I'm like fuck it, let's go. Um, so the whole time, right, it, it's, it, it, the weirdest thing about it is that everything was so fucking calm. These people are just, they all deserve Oscars, dog, because how well they acted and were able to laugh and talk with each other and everything else, it seemed almost jovial to where the point that even though I knew it was coming, I fucking believed it. I was like, man, things are getting, things are getting along. It's going to be okay. Yada, da, da, da. And then that alarm hits and then it's like a fucking wave. And my boy Shane fucking grabs my ass on my shirt and fucking yanks me and goes, do not stop moving. No matter what the fuck you do, poke and run. Do not stop moving. You stop moving, you're fucking dead, homeboy. So I did just that, man. Literally, people started moving. Um, I got poked almost immediately. I wasn't aware of it. It was a very small fucking knife, so it wasn't really shit anyways. But uh, I wasn't aware of it. I did feel like I got, like I, I feel like I got like pinched or some shit. I don't know how to describe it, man. Like the, the, th the things your body does when something happens trauma-wise, 
how it rationalizes it. Like, you know, getting stabbed obviously isn't getting pinched, but it felt like something really, really minor. So I kept on going. And then my buddy of mine tells me, you know, you better respond, dog, or it's going to be fucking bad for you. So the first person next to me, not going to mention descriptions, names, anything like that. Um, uh, uh, I, 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 yeah. uh, I, I hit him in the stomach. He was going after one other guy who was also a white guy or whatever on some, again, not racist shit. Um, and I hit him twice in the actual stomach or whatever. At this point in time, I literally watched my, my boy Shane or whatever get stabbed in the fucking neck. Um, like down here, though, to be clear, he was he was fine, but yeah, s- still yeah. scary as shit. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and he's literally holding this and then he's still running forward, getting somebody else or whatever. He yanks my ass, tells me to keep on moving because I keep freezing. Like, I'm going to be completely real with you guys. Like, I've been to riots before. This is not my first riot ever. My first riot ever was as it was in YA. But just how fucking just again, just how calm everything was to being absolutely crazy. Like from yeah. when the bell ran off to when everyone's laying on, on the ground, getting tear gas or whatever, probably like a the minute passed by. Storm, like, yeah. Right? Like pro- probably a minute passed by this shit felt like forever. And I kept freezing. Cause I just, it was just such a jarring ass thing. So every time I froze, somebody told me to, you know, yank me on, told me to go forward. So I did, um, that day I probably stabbed seven or eight people. I was hit three times total. Only one of them was actually bad. The other ones were all like kind of nicks and shit like that. Um, and then eventually the cops tell us to get down. I refuse to get down. None of us, the whole thing is that you don't get down unless like fucking they're physically making you. So they may some people or whatever. Um, I've been Mason Y plenty of times. So, you know, it wasn't anything too crazy. So I got maced. I fucking hurt. Yada, yada, yada. I kept, kept going. They dropped tear gas bombs. Um, they fired a shot in the air. At that point in time, my, 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 my boy Shane grabbed me home and he could get down. Because as soon as they, they do the, the one shot in the air and everything after that, they say no warning shots. Technically, that could be a thing. But in my experience, there's always a warning shot. Right. So they fire the warning shot. My boy Shane drags me down to the fucking ground or whatever. He's still fucking bleeding or whatever. He's like, don't fucking move. Don't fucking move. Um, a couple people are still fighting. One of them one of them gets shot. Um, it's not anything crazy as far as like it's literally like it's like towards like the middle section of their leg. But they're firing high caliber rounds, so the person's leg basically comes fucking off. Damn. Not not severed to be clear, but like there's right. what was there isn't quite right anymore. The whole shit folds inwards and he's just in a fucked off ass situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I'm literally taking my shirt up and I'm fucking covering my mouth trying to get rid of the tear gas, doesn't do anything. So I'm literally trying to watch the shit. Paranoid, I'm about to have somebody attack my ass or whatever, trying to keep my eyes open. But again, you know, tear gas in my fucking eyes and my throat I'm choking, burning. The whole thing is fucked off. Um, we eventually all get dragged off into cells. We literally are in like the, like the, if anybody's ever been to prison, um, especially in California, they have like the, uh, and, and the, the receiving cells, they have something that's like probably about that big and about eh, maybe like five and a half feet tall. It's very small. You cannot sit down at all. That's the point. You have to have to stand up. And they fucking put us all on these cells or whatever. And then we're just waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, eventually we all get showers, do some other shit. They do interviews, try to get you to make statements or whatever. Um, me personally, I got sent to K wing, which is, you know, ad seg because I don't know. They told me to make a statement, told them to fuck off. I was like, you know, you know, you, you know, I can't do that, man. Like you're trying to get me killed. I can't do it. Nothing personal. Just fuck off. So me, Shane Hoff, some other people, we got uh, treated up or whatever. And then from there on, we just kind of did our thing. Right, like, right, right. It wasn't a big deal. Um, either, um, towards the end of the month, do not believe anything you see anywhere else. I will let you guys know when they drop. Don't believe anything on uh, the internet right now. There's some, I don't know what who OEM those. I don't know anything about those ones that are online. The, the ones from Kaiser are going to be out at the end of the month and jn and tri-state that is a good thing not a bad thing that is a beautiful thing so for sure that's a beautiful thing it's it's not it's not a not fun uh even having you know crazy ass stories and shit like it's it's not um oh shit bad yeah uh in cali they charge you for a round if you're shot damn um that's fucked up the cage um so um last story and then i'll go into to my quick story uh what was the second or the worst one let's go into the worst one um you said because there was a a superficial one and then uh or some superficial ones and then you said there was one pretty bad one what was the pretty bad one 
Um, I'm going to be honest, the pretty bad one, you'll, you'll get in trouble if I tell the story, dog. Um, okay. no, it's, no uh, it's, it's deep. It's also when I was in YA, it was a little ass kids about my first night in YA, okay. uh, 11 people died that night and I was pretty fucked up too. Um, I, to be clear, I didn't kill anybody, but like it All was right. very fucking bad. I get it. Um, uh, but as far as like, if you want to know about like prison shit in general, um, I've been stabbed more times than I care to count. I just, I, I, the best way I can describe it, man, is yes, you can get a big ass blade that, that shit happens. People kick apart bunk beds. They get shit from the kitchen. Like these things happen. Right. But they're rare. Um, they're not that rare on higher end yards. People get stuff out all the time, but like where I was at, you know, for the most part, it's kind of rare. Um, on the higher end yards, I, I've been I've been to f- a four yards and everything else, but for there, I didn't have any rights. Everything was really, really peaceful, really respectful. Like there was no issues at all. All this shit happened on between the one yard and the two yard. So, which is ironic because it's supposed to be like the people that are nonviolent, like on the kind of the more like lower levels and stuff like that. It's supposed to be better, um, in my opinion. It's far, far worse. When I went to the actual four yard, I had no problems at all with anybody. Minus, I, I told you the story before, Jared. Yeah. When yeah, when we were like, I was talking shit to somebody, and then. Yeah, got a little a little extra. <laughs> I, I had to I had to be reminded what what a four yard meant, what what what, what a hands off meant. Right, right, right. But um, not like uh, like it isn't. I, I'm I'm gonna be very clear. Like I'm not some fucking badass. Oh, you've been stabbed a whole bunch of times. You know, you're you're fucking tough. Like in these places, if you happen to be in the environment to where you are in a riot, every single person gets hit. That's why I say there's getting hit with like an actual blade. There's getting hit with like a fucking basically a razor blade and then a fucking toothbrush holder. Right, they right. all they all suck, to be clear. But it isn't that big of a deal because for the most part, those for the most part those things you know they're gonna you're, you're gonna survive. Right. Like as long as you don't get infected, as long as you follow doctor's advice, as long as you maintain your basic hygiene, for the most part you're fine. Right. Um, I say I've been stabbed three times because I've been stabbed three times with long instruments. If you want to count the shit in prison, I have no fucking idea what the number is. My back is ridiculous. Um, so, I mean, it's just one of those things. Uh, if you ever do go to prison, keep your head down and be respectful. Um, I know people that did, did time recently that got out with not one single issue. Like I just got yeah. bad fucking, I just got bad luck, I guess. Yeah. But there was no riots, no bullshit, no drama. They did the basic removals when they first got in. That everybody, everybody has to do. And other than that, shit's clean. Yeah. But um, um, if anybody, if anybody has another question, I saw a bunch of people popping stuff up. Um, I will answer anything. I'm an, I'm an open book, uh, especially on my live streams on my on my channel. Um, I don't care if I get demonetized. I don't care if I lose money. Um, Jared says this is a business for him, so I don't want to cross too many lines. I want to basically be respectful. But if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to hit me up. Like, I'm an open book to everybody. Yeah, I think uh, that, to me personally, um, I think the, I mean, I I don't doubt your experience or anything like that. I think some people just act a different way. I wouldn't uh, say certain things because I think some people can, can think certain things are racist. And I'm not saying that you are. I'm saying a lot of people will call things racist that are not racist at all. It's just motherfuckers in the California prison system are deeply goddamn racist. I'm not talking about that. It was the biggest problem I had. I'm not talking about in prison. I'm talking about coming to, to the U S three years ago, going to California. No, in prison, especially on that side, on the West coast. Oh, okay. You, you guys are on, uh, cars and shit where you guys have to be segregated from each other and like you guys are like here on this side we don't have that like we're all mixed we don't fuck around like that like everybody's mixed up like you'll be separated like with certain gangs and shit but a lot of gangs will mix too because they might be part of this like rolling under the same number i'm not going to get into it but anyways um what my story is my story is completely different on this one i had a non well somewhat non-violent story mine is about time and i kind of spoke on this one time but i never told the story really but the time when a um a girl faked a pregnancy on me so what happened was was i was with somebody obviously this is before i met kara and um we were living together and everything and i was wanting out of the relationship bad and she knew it she could tell us she was getting the vibe like that i'm I'm going to be making that, that, uh, that breakup real soon. And she could tell it was coming. So next thing I know, she comes to me with a pregnancy test and says, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, fuck, 
like I, I was I was not happy, not happy to say the least. I did not want to have a kid with this girl. Like it was, yeah, I did not want to. Anyway, so she she shows me the pregnancy test, and I have no reason to to not believe her at this point, right? So I actually think that this is happening. I actually think like I'm gonna have to have a kid. All these things, so I stay with her. Right? I do the right thing, right? Do the right thing, and um, then. She then after like a couple weeks, right? A couple weeks goes by and like I'm noticing little details. Well, actually it was it was a little bit longer than that, right? I'm noticing little details. Well, um then I um I I how'd it go? I um I started like feeling like weird about it. Like I started like wondering, right? So I uh I was going through shit in my closet and an old purse falls out. And this medication falls out. And I don't know what the fuck it is. So I'm like, all right. I look at I call the pharmacist. And I said, what is this shit? And they said, it's the it's a, a medication for the fastest, safest way to get pregnant. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Right? So her plans, like, like her plans, and I'm going to go deeper into the story, but her plans was to tell me she was pregnant so that I would start, you know, I don't want to be nasty, but, you know, not taking precautions, right? And she hit, the, hit that shit raw, dog. Fuck it, hit right. it raw. She, she planned on getting pregnant, at, <laughs> right? and she figured by the time I took her to the hospital, she would be pregnant, right? So I instantly, right, went and got her and took her to the hospital because I didn't want to hear no lies yet, right? So I took her to the hospital, took her in there, and I can tell she's nervous. I can tell she's nervous, but I think at this point she actually thinks she's pregnant because, like. You're taking medication to be pregnant, you know, he's, you know, doing the, the nest, whatever, but we wind up fucking in there and the doctor comes back and says, you're not pregnant. And she goes, um, oh, you know, oh, I had a miscarriage or whatever. And he goes, no, you didn't. And she's like, she's like, yeah, it was a couple weeks ago, whatever. He pulls me to the side outside the room. He goes, she was never pregnant. Like, and I was like, this fucking bitch. So she starts, she strings out the lie. She strings out the lie and says, oh, I had a miscarriage. I was scared to tell you all this blah, 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 bullshit. Well, then I bring up the medication and I'm like, I found this shit, right? She tries to lie and say, like it was her mother's or something, right? Some dumb, just lie after lie after lie, right? It's like, you say, well, you just got to keep coming out with the lies. You got, you got this lie. It's like, oh, you call that one out? I got another one for you. So it's just one lie after another. And um, so... I'm like done with this shit, right? So I'm fucking furious because now, well, I, I'm happy <laughs> on one hand, but I'm mad on the other. And I actually even named the baby. Like we had names picked out and everything. Well, the story really gets fucked up because after I broke up with her, she got with some other dude or whatever, wound up actually getting pregnant and having a baby and named the baby that name that I picked. That was going to be uh, her baby's name. I was waiting for like, there's a baby Jared around. Like there, there's no, a baby no, Neves. No, no. There, there's a baby no, no. Neves around. Like I picked the name for her kid. But anyway, so, but um, when I broke up with her though, broke up with her and um, I had recently been shot in the eye and my, all the bones in my face were fucked up. I was healing still. You got shot in the face. What the fuck? Uh, with a potato cannon. Um, oh, it, okay. It crushed my eyeball and it busted all these bones. I was fucked up, like really bad. I was blind for Damn. I was blind for pretty much a whole month, and then I started getting my vision back. At this point, I can't see clearly out of my. I'm healing, like I'm. I, it's been a few weeks, so like I can see a little bit, but things are blue. Things are because when my sight started coming back, Shit. I um, it, everything was blue and shaped. So, um. Now I, I'm a healing, but I'm still fucked up. I still have black eye. Like I'm still, my bones are still broken. I'm still fucked up. Right. So, but, uh, I, um, I, I break up with her. Right. Well, I, because of like spite, whatever you want to call it, I, whatever you want to call it. Right. I, uh, I call up an ex and, um, I, I have her come over and she fucking uh, comes by. Well, the other one, the one that faked the pregnancy, she winds up circling my house all night thinking i'm gonna be up to something well then after after old girl shows up she shows back up she shows back up she comes in she's irate right well she starts looking around 
So I was looking around and she notices all the pictures of her aren't on the wall. They're gone. Now she wants the pictures, right? And I'm just trying to get her out. Like, get the fuck out. Like, I don't want you here. Get the fuck out. Blah, 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 blah. Well, she now she's stuck on these pictures because she's looking around. There used to be pictures, of, you know, of us. Where are the pictures? Where are the pictures? And I don't want to tell. Why them. the fuck would you keep them though? Like, no, no, you don't understand. This just happened. Like, we just broke up. This is the same day. The same day. So yeah. I broke up with her the same night. I invited my ex over. Now she comes back, and when she comes back, she comes in. And now she's noticing the pictures aren't on the wall. Like she just left this morning. So, and I don't want to tell her what I did with the pictures because it was some sneaky ass shit. So I'm trying to avoid the situation. I'm trying to avoid it. Right. Like, I don't want to tell her. And then finally I'm, I'm so mad and I just want her out. I was like, Oh, you want the fucking pictures? You want the pictures? I got down on the ground, started dragging them out from underneath the couch because I had old girl coming by so fast that I just took them down from the wall and slid them under the couch. You know, that's how fast this whole situation happened. I literally just kicked her out, had the <laughs> other girl come and took the pictures off the wall and I have no place to put them because I can't store them. I ain't got time. This girl's going to be here any second. So I have to hide them under the couch. So now I'm dragging pictures out from under the couch, handing them to her, take the motherfucker, get the fuck out. She's <laughs> I think, right? She's pissed. So I'm by the door and um, I'm like, get the fuck out, get out, get out. I'm on the outside of my door. My front door's open. She's standing right there. And I know she's going to take a swing. Like we're at that point. Like I'm getting punched, right? I only got one eye now, right? Because now at this point, I can see out of one eye clearly, but not so much out of the other eye. But I know it's coming. I know it's coming. So she takes the swing, and when she takes the swing, I just grab her hand. Like, just bam. She swings. I grab at the same time. I grab her hand, and I just yank her by her arm because I got her fist, right? So I grab her fist, and I just yank her right out the door. Whoop! And then I go in, and I shut the door behind me. Just bam, bam, really quick. And, uh, yeah, it was a, um, a pretty crazy night for OJ Reed, but I did. Oh, oh, I left the part out. I'm sorry. I had already gotten punched. That was the thing. That's why I knew that punch was coming because before when, when I was, cause I had like a stairway up to my door, I was at the bottom of the stairs and I'm standing there and I'm just trying to get the fuck out. And next thing I know, bloop in my eye, in the eye that's bad, the bad eye, I can't even see it coming. Right? So I'm like, bam. And the only thing I could say is in my fucking bad eye. <laughs> because it's like, why'd you have to hit me in my bad eye? Fucking hit me in the good eyes. You know this eye <laughs> messed up right now. Like, what are you doing to me? But uh, so the next time when she swung at me, I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. And I'm like, I'm waiting. Oh, shit. You know, with one eye. But, uh, but yeah, it was pretty crazy. But the craziest part of it to me is that months later, or probably like a year later or however long later. I don't remember two years, whatever she, when she had a, a kid, actually not my kid, some other dude, she names it the name that I named my fake kid. And I, I can't help but think like if that guy knew that his kid is named after a fake pregnancy, that's fucked up. Like that's, that's messed weird. up to do that to somebody who that's does that? weird. Who does that? Right. And the thing is, is that my name is in it. Like part of my name, like uh, my middle name is, is part of the name. Like, so what's your middle name? Ray. Ray. Yeah. So it's like Raymond. No, it was, it, no, it was, a, it was a, um, a girl's name. Come clean motherfucker. Ray Lee. Rayland. Rayland. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, really weird though. Really, really weird. Uh, but anyways, that is the rest or the whole story. Um, um, but yeah, so I all I got to say what? is, did you really call yourself Jerry Reeve? Jay it, was Reeve? A, it, was a, it was a hot scenario for old Jay Reeve. Jay Reed. It's Jay Reed. Jay Reed, whatever. With a D, Jay Reed. <laughs> Just a weird way to say it. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't make it up. I didn't make that up. That, that was from other people. Um, okay. Uh, you don't make up your own nicknames. <laughs> that, 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 that wasn't my, I didn't make that shit up. Somebody else. <laughs> um, J Reed, J Rock, like uh, anything with the J basically. But J Reed was, was there because, um, I'm Jared, J Reed. Yeah. And then, um, 
Like I had other ones like uh like little Ray and shit like that because my dad's name's Raymond, my middle name's Ray, so little Ray, uh shit like that. But yeah, J J Reed right there, yeah. Um yeah, she would she would have beat that prego ass. You know what, man? It's messed up. Like, I am so thankful that I found that stuff. Like, because I honestly thought like it was over. Like, I like I'm having a kid. Like, and I was literally planning out like, and in my head it was like, I don't want to be with this person. How am I having a child with this person? Like, all the fucked up things. Like, damn, I cannot believe I'm having a kid with this bitch. Like, this is the last. Bit. Like, and then it makes you think about like, don't be with people. That you aren't prepared to have a child with because, man, that's a fucked up situation. And I'm so glad that God blessed me with her being a crazy ass and it really wasn't true. But to take medication to plan on getting, you know, like that's the story. Like you took medication to, to assure that you got pregnant after telling me you were pregnant. Because and that, that was the way to keep me because she knew I was breaking up with her. That's fucked up. Yeah. Um, but uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you for uh, for joining. Um, awesome stories. I think this was a pretty cool live. I see there's 99 people still in here. I appreciate everybody coming through. Uh, come on, Jared. That kid's first word was bang. <laughs> it wasn't my <laughs> oh, Bitch be crazy. Yeah, bitches be crazy. I donate. Oh, wait. I dated. A crazy girl for seven years, then married her. No regrets. Well, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being with a crazy girl, just not that one. Bro, I've, I dated almost I exclusively you, you exclusively crazy, crazy bitches. bitches for the longest time. Yeah, you got some crazy ass bitch stories. At one point in time, I hopped in a polyamorous relationship with, with two of them, and they both pulled the same shit at the same fucking time and then fought each other over it. So, like, I get it. Yeah, yeah crazy ass bitches out there are crazy ass dudes too um so moral of tonight's story jared dodges bullets and kyle doesn't <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. oh man because i'm brigade. fucking huge bro like, I'm, I'm a big ass target like <laughs> lady brigade new york what is up brother where have you been man you fell Boom. the face of the earth I appreciate you joining. I don't know how long you've been in here. You missed a pretty badass live if you just got in. Hopefully you've been in here for a little bit. Um, I appreciate everybody coming and joining. The moderators, I appreciate you. Um, Fiend, thank you so much. Shout out to all the people that did drop a like. Let's see how many of them it was. All <laughs> 93 of you. Thank you very much. Ooh, three dislikes. I can't mess those. Thank you for the dislikes. I appreciate all of those. <laughs> and Kyle, man, thank you so much. Oh, thank you to all the Patreons and everybody who supports. Thank you to everybody who uses my links. You guys are fucking awesome. I really appreciate that. It definitely helps. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about crazy biatches. Anybody who wants to hear the full story, just rewind to 9 o'clock. That's when story time starts. Everybody knows that. I love you. Love you guys. Peace out.